It's Gab and Doodle time. Don't let anyone know. They probably already know, but shh. We got a special guest on tonight. Our special guest is already here. He's already joined and watching me do all this nonsense. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm starting out in a weird mood already tonight, but hopefully not. Um, let me put in the standard stuff that I'm going to put in here. Hey, Kelly, I'm going to let you in in one second. Let me just do the ask us anything. I'm going to pin that to the comments. And so if people want to throw in some comments, they can. Let's, uh, whoop, there we go. And then I'm going to pin that. Okay. So we got a special guest tonight. It's a guest who does something different. What does that mean? I'm not 100% sure I know what that means. But I think I do. Which is, our guest does a different type of artwork than what I've, I think, typically had on here. Now, that doesn't mean that other people haven't done this before. But, it does mean that our guest does something that's kind of rare and interesting in the kid lit market. Our guest tonight is Kelly Pousset here. And the reason I say that is Kelly does lots of cut collaged, dimensional, lit, although I'm probably not going to flip to a page here that works perfectly for it, but photographed, painted images. So we have stuff like this one, Do Not Rake Your Garden. And we have If You Were Night. Here, you can see all that fun photo, photography, photography. It's late at night here, but then also does other stuff like this one called "Just Beyond the Very Very Far North," where Kelly's worked on images in the interior. Let me see if I can find a good page here. Up, up, up. Uh, little small illustrations, black and white. So that doesn't mean they only work on that other stuff. But I'm going to let our special guest, Kelly, in, and we're going to hear more from them. Give me one second. Boop, 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 boop. So, Kelly, that, that invite is out there. Just waiting on you to connect. And there we are. Hello. Hi. Hi. You have not only, like, did, I just talked about how you do, like, dimensional stuff, but then you have this whole little scene behind you on your oh. window <laughs> is that is that I for have, a book no um i have lots of stuff all over the place mainly because i don't have storage to put it anywhere so it just ends up out which i kind of like though sort of yeah. you know sort of sort of fun come yeah. home and... yeah i'll say the same thing here all yeah. the junk off to the side on, on mine all the the mini illustrations yeah. and, and storage that's that's fun for me totally um, yeah. yeah yes big. yeah it's it <laughs> happens like it's it's all it gets it becomes a lot of it is is flatter stuff that i i like i have some paper drawers and stuff i can file it yeah. away but um s some of it is like is 3d and i can't you know it has to sit out so i imagine it is. <laughs> i imagine that i don't even know we're jumping in before i even say hello. hi uh but <laughs> Thanks so much, Mark. This is really exciting. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm really nervous. Oh, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. There's lots public of people speaking. to get. Public <laughs> speaking. Yeah, it's 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 public between two of us. I know, but just then imagine there's no one all these walking. like people. Um, I feel like I'm else? yelling. I feel like when my mom first used Skype and she was like yelling into the <laughs> laptop, and we were we were my sister and I'd be like, "Mom, you don't have to yell. Like it's like talking on the phone." There's, uh, <laughs> like uh, a... In my faculty <laughs> meetings, there's um. There, there is a certain faculty member who I will not name, uh, but is a, of a older persuasion mm. who didn't quite understand how Zoom worked. And so when we first started during the pandemic, all you saw during the meetings was this the whole time, because he held the phone up to his ear like he was talking on, and oh. all we saw was his cheek for a majority of the meeting. Oh, that's so sweet, though. It is. It is. With it is sort of cute at the skirt. same time, but. Um, yeah. But he also had the radio on in the background and oh, all things that yeah. just blew us. Um, so, first really. of all, welcome. 
Thank to, you. Uh, to Gavin Doodle and welcome to uh, the night that is ahead of us. Um, I really do appreciate you joining me tonight. Absolutely. And I know I'm, I'm totally fascinated to sort of find out tons of stuff about your process. Your process mm -hmm. is kind of like mind blowing to me. I already know it. Um, but also uh, sort mm -hmm. of, uh, I have all sorts of questions about sort of the the workload that goes with it. And we'll, we'll get into all that. Sure, at some point. yeah. But I'm gonna start off with my three basic principles. Mm -hmm. One, or question statements. One, you can leave whenever you need to leave. Okay. So don't feel guilty if, if you say, hey, I'm done uh, and I'm tired of this and whatever <laughs> it may be. Just say, I'm out of here and you can hit the X button and go okay. and I won't be offended. Um, well, I'll say, okay. <laughs> I'm, used, I'm used to students packing up while the class is just now like wrapping up. And they're like, oh. you notice them putting their backpack on their shoulder or like slowly inching getting, their way off. <laughs> yeah, getting ready. I'm used yeah. to it. Um, two becomes a question. So the first one was a statement and the other two. Uh, what are we going to be using tonight? So my mm -hmm. wife keeps track of what everybody uses, what and it, any materials, any programs, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going digital, anything of that sort. What what are we playing with? Okay. Um, well, I got these fantastic new pastels for Christmas okay. that I've been really enjoying. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna play with them. They're a little different than what I've used before. So I'm still not super used to the like texture of them. Yep. Um, I also will be using my uh, regular pan pastel. You can't see the name, but a little. It's there, yeah. Pans, <laughs> I, pans. I have them off to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Let's see if I can. <laughs> Let's see if I have a darker color. Yeah. No, I just pulled a light color too. So. Yeah, see, yeah, uh, you can't, yeah, you can't see the. Um, are you using one of the, these? Oh, with this, yeah. With this so, spongy thing? To, so this is really funny. I I bought a few because I was kind of embarrassed. And the normal material I use to apply pan pastels is toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't want to show that? Well, I was like, what do I do? Like bring out the whole roll of new toilet paper? <laughs> That's that's fine. I mean, it's not like it's it's not like it's used toilet paper. <laughs> no, and it's a brand new roll. I thought it'd be kind of weird too if I used like a half used roll. And anyway, so <laughs> I did. I bought a few sponges to try because I've never actually okay. tried applying it with the sponges. I thought it might be kind of interesting. And I have those little tools that you just held up. I got. Okay. One right here. They yeah. Have, they work. They they work pretty yeah. good. And supposedly you can wash them too. Yeah. And so you can reuse them, but I've never washed them. I, I end up using them and then I, I forget where they are and then they never get washed. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I have like pencil crayons. I like, uh, you know, that. And, and also, um, so I do kind of weird things. I don't really know how to use watercolors super well. That's something else I've never been very good at. So I kind of like painted out a bunch of swatches that I'm going to use. And then I, I cut out from that the pieces that I want. So. Okay. Anyway. Okay. And then my, yes. my wife said, what was the brand of the, the pastel? Oh. Not the pan pastel. Uh, Jack so she could... Richardson. Um, okay. I can put it, can I put it in the comments? Yes, you, I, you want to. Jack Richardson. He, um, so I did a bunch of research to find some new pastels and these are incredible. They're all, the, they're hand rolled. Um, and the they come in these sets with like, really slight variation in in hue like oh, i don't yeah. know if you can oh they're thick too yeah yeah they're, they're not little tiny no. guys um so they are a little different to use because like they are thick so you, like they're a bit more difficult to kind of do the super detailed stuff but yeah um you have to they're, shave they're off beautiful 50 percent of them to get a point <laughs> well that's the thing right and then it's like you got all yeah you don't want to waste this so you have these like piles of dust there yeah so anyway, yes, Jack Richardson. That's okay. it's um it, it is a really nice brand so far that I you know I'm enjoying. It's so. it's funny whenever whenever someone shows me a brand that I've never seen before, I think I have the I have a bad uh, habit of assuming that it's a cheap brand. I'm oh, like oh, I've never seen well, that, so that must not be good. <laughs> but probably ninety percent of the time they're like fancier because they're like, only, you know, it's not like the every day you can go out to the store and buy it. Yeah. That everybody sees. And so it's it's well, the equivalent of like Windsor Newton. Everybody knows because it's out there, but there are better totally. brands than Newton that yeah. just you don't know about because they're so expensive. So. Exactly. And I like I've I think I've I mean I'm a bit of a 
yeah, like art supply hoarder. I have a lot and I've tried like lots of different kinds because I, I was for a long time. I was like, it doesn't matter. You know, you just use what you have and, and that works. But I have discovered over the years that, um, you know, higher quality, especially paper and and pastels and pencil crowns really do make a, a difference and they're a little less frustrating to use and they make it more enjoyable even. Yeah. So, um, you know, yeah. And, and same like with watercolors, even like I said, I'm not very good at using watercolors, but um, I found this one, I think it's Japanese and it's, they're really quite cool. Um, I'll pull out, find the, and I, I saw somebody use them once on Instagram and I went on like a mad oh. Google hunt yeah. to like find them. Yeah. <laughs> but I did find them in the end and they're, uh, oh, I don't even know what they're called. It's all in Japanese. Kiratako, Kiratake, I could huh. be totally butchered during that okay apologize to anybody that's japanese that's watching this it's but they come in these beautiful little like pans oh look at that yeah and the colors are really cool like really fun different not your sort of typical palettes yeah 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 so nice. i went then crazy and i found like <clears throat> an even bigger set <laughs> is, is it is it like a, a palette this is this is like <laughs> there's probably people out there going like, I wonder they're going to start drawing. But yeah. to me, this is like, I'm like, oh, I like talking good. about art supplies. I find yeah. it really enjoyable. <laughs> well, what I was wondering is, do they come in sets that are different palettes? Like you can buy a, a gouache set that is a Rebecca Green set. And it's got like oh. her palette to it. Amazing. And I'm wondering, are those, are those someone, um, someone like designed the palette? Or is it meant to be a general sort of like blanket of colors? I think it's probably more of a blanket, like, yeah, selection. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if they're meant for, if it is like a specific one. I know they have different types of sets. Yeah. Um, but Just yeah, I think that, the smaller that, one was a, like a specific one for something, but I don't that's know. That's what I was going to say. The smaller one you what? held up there looked like it was sort of, uh, it wasn't like your typical red, your that's typical blue. It was slightly see. off and that's why I was yeah. wondering if there was that switch. Um, yeah. and then what, what do you use for a surface? Like, um, cause obviously you, I, you cut paper. So it, yeah. you, you know, like you're not using illustration board. No, that. there's a thickness, <laughs> but no, um, I use, um, like I, I use a Bristol. It's, um, I found that hundred pound Bristol is the best. Okay. Um, it, Makes sense. it is thicker for sure. Um, but it's, it gives it like, it gives the, the paper some structure for standing up and um yeah. the detailed stuff it works still it's it's thin enough that i can you know. what do you what do you cut it with though oh yeah good old excel so how's how's your fingers and knuckles and hand and wrist you know like <laughs> knock on wood so far i haven't ever had a bad cut i've been very fortunate no. i've, well, I've not even course. i'm not oh, even thinking, just of like, I'm just thinking bristol board because of the oh. thickness of having to like um Cut it's a really it. big forearm. Yeah. <laughs> you hold up your hand and it's just <laughs> ripped, just muscle. <laughs> Sweatshirt just pops open. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, your hand gets tired after a while for sure. But it's a big. Pro I did this one. Um, I did a window scene for a little local store in town. Yeah. So it was a Christmas sort of thing. So I used actually foam board. And it was eighth of an inch foam board and I used I think I went through close to 2000 little except yeah. like exacto blades and it was pretty tough like my hands and arms were pretty sore by the end yeah but there were big trees and you know so it's it's that's one of those lessons that we, we have students that, at my college that they get a what we call a freshman mm -hmm. kit and it comes with like a mat knife and paints and things and they give them a little exacto blade like that oh, okay. it comes with I think two blades and most of them, by the time they hit senior year, I'm like, okay, what do you, you know, can you cut this out? Do you have a blade? And they pull out this blade that's been in there for four like years. And it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, it is like dull and they have to like gouge through stuff. Oh. And I'm like, you guys, you got to replace these blades on a regular basis. And like, they're not that expensive. Yeah. And not all of them have this problem because not all of them are using the blades. But same thing with like cutting mats. They end up using a blade in their mat cutter for too long and I have, I'm like, no, use it for like one or two mats and then you're done. And yeah. you want a nice clean cut. Totally. Um, and and it's almost, yeah. when you're in that process hearing 2000, I'm like, yeah, that makes total yeah. sense. That's about the right number I would want. Yeah. Well, and I, I, that's the other thing I quickly discovered when I started doing this is 
it, there is no point in like forcing yourself to keep using a blade that because I like really I just use the tip like when I think about it like it's really the tip that's it like I don't use yep. the whole thing and yep. so once the tip is gone you know I throw it out and I have to replace it and it, it felt really wasteful for a while like my husband and I would try to figure out how to like sharpen it again we're like can we reuse these somehow it feels so wasteful but like but you know there's just no point yeah. okay so let, let me let me uh, go on to the third oh, the third part or third yeah. question Sure. What are we making in that? Well, okay. So a while back, um, I made, I wasn't really sure because part of, part of my process is the photography piece of it, which isn't really, I can't really do here, you know, in this space. Cause I have a space for that. Yeah. That's with lights and so it, it's a little tough, but I thought at least I could start working on a new project that I wanted to, to work on. And a while ago I made, um, a greenhouse. Cool. So um, I've been making it, the, the top comes right off so okay. I can yeah. fill it up. And I've done like a fall and a winter scene. So now it's time to do a spring scene because we're, you know, hopefully one day going to have spring <laughs> here in yeah, wait, what, north central BC. <laughs> okay. I was going to say where, I know it's British Columbia, but where, uh, wait, where, what's south of you in the States? Uh, so so we, where I'm located is about nine hours north of Vancouver, which is right above like Bellingham and um, Seattle. Okay. So okay. Um, Seattle, I, oof, I don't, I can't remember how far that's from Vancouver, like a couple of hours, I think. No, but. So we're I, right in the smack dab middle of the, of BC, the province of BC. Okay. So. Is it the British Columbia? I always like can't locate that. I know like Nova Scotia, it's over on our own. I can. I can chalk that one up yeah. to, to, to ease, but British yeah. Columbia has this like drifting ability within the Canada <laughs> forecast. One, one time it's in the east, one time it's in the west, and I just never know. So, um, Fair and, enough. And, and so, yeah, I was, the reason why I asked is like, yeah, how far up are you? Are you in, in nighttime <laughs> it, constantly or? Yeah, no, no. I mean, it definitely gets darker. Like the, the days are starting to lighten okay. now, which is quite nice. Like, but yeah, we did have a really dark, you know, it's, it's dark from like, 3 30 in the afternoon till like nine and you know or so something like that and in so, the winter time so okay i got a technical question then we should probably just start sure. making <laughs> fair, fair so, enough, yeah. it's it's something wherein you are taking photographs of your work are you obviously you have lights and things that you set up for for your work yeah the the daylight you don't use daylight at all um, i assume oops i just like kicked my desk here um, I, the odd time I have, but I don't for the odd time I do, if it, if it's it, like an Instagram post and it's not, I don't worry too much say, for, the, for the resolution yeah. and then, um, capturing that light. But I, I've never for, for book work or for anything like that, you just can't, the camera can't pick up enough. It, it needs more light to, to fill the scene. Okay. So, but I mean, I thought about it. I thought like, cause lots of times there's really cool shadows coming in through my windows here in the, especially in the summertime in the afternoon. And yeah. like, oh, that would be really neat to capture that. And, cause that's really what's intriguing to me is the shadows and the light. And like, I mean, yeah, like th that kind of play is, is really fun. So um, yeah, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe in the future, my, my husband also bought like a fog machine, which we thought would be really cool <laughs> to like, you know, fog out some scenes because yeah. it makes the light really diffuse and thick and really, you know, it's quite, quite fun. So I imagine that a fog machine though would really fog up the scene because of how small <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can't see well, it anymore. It's, uh... it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's also pretty, it's kind of stinky. So, you know, you don't want to do it too much in the house. Um, but some of the scenes are quite big. Like it really depends. I, I like to, the reason too, I don't, I don't photograph them here is you, we use a bigger table. That's, that's a lot longer. So you can have a really nice long depth of field gotcha. and those scenes, those big, like more outdoor scenes and stuff, they look huge then, you know, and big vast sort of thing. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I need a one last thing, which is, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what I'm painting tonight. I think okay, I have an yeah, idea. I was uh i some some of these i walk in and i i know exactly what i'm doing ahead of time i may not have sketched it out but i know what i'm doing in this case i really don't okay and i'm wondering i have a i have a sort of an idea but i don't know where it's going of any sort i was thinking lots and lots of cars because i don't draw cars very often i was trying to think of like what's something i don't yeah. do often but 
I want to hear a suggestion from you just to challenge me, uh, an idea. Okay, well, the things I've decided, just so you know, I've decided that I'm going to um, fill my greenhouse. She, she's me a mouse. She's a mouse that owns this greenhouse. Okay. Mouse's greenhouse. And she's growing mushrooms in her greenhouse, which I know is totally not logical, but whatever. Like, who cares, right? I don't like, you know. So could maybe, do you like mushrooms? <laughs> That's well. It's making me think. Maybe the cars don't have to be standard. What happens if they're like weird things, like like acorns? Did, was it Richard Scary that made like apple cars and like like the book of cars? Yeah. I love those things. I, yeah, that, maybe that, you could do some mushroom. A cars. reference, a reference to Richard Scary. My, um, you know who Little Richard is, right? Mm -hmm. We yeah. somehow we made a mistake on here, or somebody said something that they said Little Richard Scary. And at some point, I'm going to do a Richard Scarry spinoff. So it nice. looks like his work, but with little Richard in it <laughs> as one of the characters. Love it. <laughs> I think it's so funny. And like, if someone's got to do it at some point, just as a dumb meme, I need to yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but awesome. I like, okay, so inanimate object car traffic. Totally. Okay, I can do that. That's, you know. Yeah, that would be hilarious. I would love that with your characters. Your characters are amazing. Thank Something you. Something like that would be super funny. So I'm going to wing it then. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to sketch. This is what my sketch yeah. is for the night. You ready? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that's, that's it. Beautiful. That's, you know, I'm gonna you know put what's it funny? I hate sketching stuff out beforehand. Usually I don't. Like I, I, that's the biggest thing I struggle with. I shouldn't should say that out loud. It's like book work and that, but I, I really have a hard time sketch because sometimes like I just go on like the, yeah, wing it and kind of go with the flow and that doesn't always work. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's jump into. I, I have uh, as we start to set up. I want I want you to answer uh, the idea of like, okay, so if you are making something that's dimensional, how do you sketch that? How what do you provide to the art director? But let's let's start setting okay. up, and we can start talking about that. But okay, so should I flip that. my camera around? Yep. Is that okay? Yep. So I'm gonna flip mine. This? I also drew uh, fro Frogert uh, <laughs> earlier. Today. I was just like. Frogger. The idea of Robert. Robert um, the Frog. Yeah. Nice. Frogger. Um, um, okay. I don't know what that means, but. So I have to say, because I've never, like, done this yeah. before, my cutting skills may not be as supreme as they <laughs> As they could be, because I'm like looking at the camera, but I mean, I should probably just concentrate on what I'm doing on the desk. Yeah, yeah, don't even yeah. worry about the camera. As long as your camera uh, is pointed down and we see your hands, okay. then see yeah, don't worry about the camera. I will watch the feed on the uh, iPad that I have here. There's a, okay. there's a delay to it. Um, okay. But uh, Whoa, I will watch it when, you know, if, if people have comments and things of the sort, so we can sort of keep track of what's going on. Um, I hear something. But someone saying, "Oh, I read someone just said I'm here for Frogger." Yeah, yeah, that's really. that's Bear Edwards. Bear Edwards has been uh, joining me on these been. for so long. We go way back, uh, <laughs> but he, Bear Edwards does lots of uh, fun, weird characters and things of the sort. And I feel like Frogger would make a lot of sense for Bear Edwards too <laughs> to be able to do. Um, the uh, so tell me as as, as you set up yep. as you as you get going here like. That is, so a lot of the questions I probably have for you are, are, I mean, I have questions about you and your life and things of the sort, but I'm so like flabbergasted at the, the amount of work that probably goes into every single thing that you do <laughs> with these pieces. And I'm just fascinated by, is there like a, or how robust do you have to be with your process and the sketch phase and like, what do you actually hand in? What do they see? What do they comment back? And like, can you give me a little bit of insight into that, into that world? Um, yeah. Um, so, so it's definitely been sort of a learning curve, I think for me, like, um, I mean, so like, okay, so backing it that up, like, I, I didn't, I didn't go to school for art or for, you know, illustration or anything. So I really kind of went into this industry without knowing a lot about, about it, you okay. know, um, which I think is good in some ways, but it's also not good, you know, it, you, you don't have a lot of that information, I think, may, that you probably gain in school. Um, 
there's also that confidence piece like it's taken me a really long time to sort of become confident with what i'm doing and um and that's you know that may, maybe everybody well everybody i guess goes through that but um yeah. so yeah like so when i decided to like i wanted to create 3d like diorama type images for books um it it was a kind of a big deal because it was it was tough to know how people would re like respond to that and it is weird it's a little weird it's also pretty like labor intensive and um but i was really determined and i was just really like i thought they could be really beautiful and really different and unique you know and um i think that's what just sort of kept driving me forward with it and so when i hand like so when i create the rough drafts for a book i i usually preface it all by saying like, like this is generally like what it's going to be you know mm -hmm. but things could change because we're taking like a flat image and creating it into a 3d upright thing and and that sometimes things block things and i have to move things around a little bit and um most most people have been pretty receptive to that i mean there's the odd you know um publisher that wants it a little bit more concrete and that yeah. that's difficult but um, I think too, as I've become more confident in what I'm doing and, and, and in my art style, like I, I feel better to, just to be like, to kind of trust the process and just say, Hey, you know, this is what it is. And I hope that we can work together on this and, you know, yeah, um, that you're not going to have a fight. Big blowout. Yeah. yeah. Fists. Yeah. They stop, so they stop talking to you. What's that? <laughs> I said, they stop talking to you. They won't return your emails. Totally. They're like, this person is extremely challenging to deal with. Well, I don't know. Maybe they do think that. Who knows? But, you know, I, I try to be super easygoing and like, yep. you know, as as, uh, as, as easy as I, I can be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I don't know if that answered your question, no, it, but it, that's kind of. Like, have you, I mean, the, the, the thing that I have, I've been pushing back against in my own work is just the idea of like, I'm really trying to force myself not to do overly ornate sketches uh, because yeah. it locks me in too much. Yeah. But I, that idea of like, yeah, there has to be some faith on the part of the art director. I mean, I'm assuming yeah. that you've established your, your style and your approach and your process to a point now where when people see your work or, or hire you, they know what they're walking into. They know uh, that this is yeah. not gonna be a like, you know, your standard, uh process sketch just because of the materials that you use and the the method totally yeah i mean i think so like you know i think it's like one of those things where it's as much as i i think there's a lot of people that use paper cut now and and you know or, or have been for a long time it still seems like it's like a new thing to art like to the to the book of or the world of kids books like yeah i feel like people still don't i think i think there's still this sort of this expectation that it's going to still be super perfect and I, you know it I that's one of the pieces that i really like about it is it's not perfect like it's there is massive imperfections with it and it's it's but it's kind of charming that way you know and um it's sort I mean, of hard could... to it's kind of hard to kind of connect with the art directors that sort of feel that the same as you do about that, you know, and realize that like, yeah. I don't know, there's some, some joy in that imperfection, if that sort of oh, makes sense, you know? <laughs> to me, that's like the best part of, uh, and this is, you know, coming from being in art school and teaching now in art school and whatnot, there is a lot of emphasis on trying to get things perfect. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, once you get out, it becomes this question of like, how do you actually make that imperfection the perfect imperfection? Like, how do you, how do you shift it? And sometimes that is like understanding or, or looking at your work and saying, hey, this little thing that people are going to look at and go like, wow, there's a miscut there or, um, you know, you don't line something up perfectly. I may look at it and go, it's the best thing in the world because it isn't lined up and someone else may look at that and go, well, hey, this is, you know, there's something wrong with it. Yeah. And how do you express that to the person? Like, that's the whole point of it. Exactly. <laughs> and, yes. you know, exactly. some, you're right. Some art directors get it and understand that, like, they love that imperfection. And there's some art directors that just want the thing to be, you know, super tight yeah. and perfect. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the, even the idea of like what, what you do, I can look at it as someone who has had experience in sort of, you know, with exacto blades and things of the sort and know that there are times where 
stuff isn't going to cut perfectly or there's going to be a little yes. edge that like the paper fibers moved in a way that you didn't want in the final print or whatever but i also think that tells you that it's a paper cut thing like if it's exactly. not that what why even do that if it's if it's not about like you mentioned the idea of light and shadow like you're right, yeah. right in a way and and not to diminish the the lovely artwork that's on the paper but in a way the light and shadow is sort of the the heart of the beast exactly in, yeah in all of that's that work. totally that's totally it and i mean like I'll be honest, I don't really think I'm that great of a drawer. Like, I mean, I love creating little cute characters and I love like thinking up hilarious little stories for them and putting that into the illustration. But I don't think I'm like that fantastic of a of a drawer, uh, you know, but I feel like I can capture with using light, with shadowing, I can capture emotion and mood. And that's that's what I want. Like that's that to me is like, that's what it speaks to me the most for my art, you know? It almost registers like, in a way, and forget if I'm putting words in your mouth here, but bug. the yeah, the idea of what? Did you say bug? There was like a fruit fly uh, like flying across. I was just kind of like, get him out of here, sorry. Uh, I just heard bug. <laughs> yeah, uh, bug. <laughs> uh, but the, the idea that like, you're almost more of a director or as much a director of a play as you are, or, you know, a scene, uh, scene maker yeah. as you are the art maker in the process. So right. it's all about staging and getting the light right so that the focus is on the right part of the scene. And the, yeah. the artwork is important, but it may not be the, the end result. Whereas like for a lot of painters, there is just, you make the piece yeah. and you're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the, one of the things I always like, when I, when I look at your work, um, I don't think that like visually, and maybe I'm just clueless to it, but I don't feel like there are that many people out there that are doing cut paper stuff. I mean, collage and things of the sort, yes, if you lump that in, but the dimensional cut paper feels like a very, like, uh, it's it's you and Ellie McKay. Yep, and yep. And I don't know, that may be about it in my, in my sort of, uh, my, I don't know, my, what, I don't, I don't want to say history or my, my understanding, but I'm sure there's others that are, I'm totally negating in the process, yeah, but I feel like... Right. It is such a distinct calling card of yours that I imagine that, you know, when people come to you, they come to you because they really want your approach. Not that, hey, we want you to replicate someone else. <laughs> but it must be kind of nice. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope so. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've tried really hard to, to try different styles and like do things differently, but it always comes back to this. And I think like sometimes you just, you know, you got to do, it sounds probably super cheesy, but you have to do what your heart tells you is the yeah. right thing to do. And um, sometimes that isn't like, it's the less traveled road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God, my, my dog yeah. is going bananas outside uh, here, but. Um, <laughs> potentially that road is, yeah, very bumpy and yep. you're gonna fall off into the, into the weeds at points and have exactly. to stumble back on, but yes. Yeah. It, for me, I, and I think a lot of people that I have on here, they, they all kind of agree that it is that stumble and uh, the the getting back up that is the fun part, almost as much as looking at the finished artwork. But yes, it's, it's yeah. That, that, it's the process. It, yeah, exactly. And I think like you, you know, you go through these times of feeling super just defeated and like, what am I doing? Like, this is, this is just not good. And you know, I, I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to make anything of this, you know, yeah. but um, it takes a lot of sort of internal dialogue and strength just to say, nope, you know, this is really what I want to do and I'm going to keep doing it. Even if it means, you know, it takes number of years before something actually takes off from it. Um, I don't know. So you know. Let me ask you then, as it, far as like pushback, you said, when I said like a lot of art directors must, or it must be interesting sort of trying to convey sketches. And you mentioned that some people don't always get the process or, you know, may not be a perfect match. What, what kind of, um, have you had lots of pushback basically? Have you had people that have come back and said like, well, this isn't what I wanted um, or is it pretty smooth sailing? I haven't had 
said, like, honestly, once I've gotten to that point of, of kind of committing into a, a project, I, it's been pretty, it's been pretty good. They, they're well aware of, of the, of the art, they, of the style of it, of how it's going to look, you know? Yeah. Um, there is the odd time where I think they sort of change their mind a little bit, but honestly, okay. it's been pretty good. Um, I've worked with some really wonderful art directors and publishers. My experiences have been super positive that way. I feel really lucky about that. Um, but before, like before committing to a project, yeah, there's been the odd time where I think it just hasn't, the style just doesn't suit, you know, I honestly don't, don't know, like when, when somebody, this is a part of the, in, of the whole process. I'm not clear on, like when your art is sort of somebody finds your art or like an art director finds your art or, or is presented with your art and they like it and they bring it to the to the larger group or whatever yeah. in the publishing house i don't know how that like i don't know that piece of it but they must present it or something and suggest it for a project and then um you know not everybody in that group will like it and that's yep. life you know and that's sometimes it just the majority rules and that's how it is and yeah, it's sometimes if it's a project I'm super excited about, it's a bit of a letdown and I feel sad because I think like, oh my goodness, I really can see this. Like, I can see this. I can see my art in this, but there's nothing you can do. You know, you just got to kind of keep forging ahead and, and uh, yeah, so. That, that part is scary. I mean, in a sense, for the most part, I've, I've been illustrating and not writing. Yeah. But especially yeah. if you're writing and they go to that like editorial meeting and they're picking all the different, you know, it's all these different editors going, especially at the big houses, they're going, hey, we have this, what do you guys think? And someone says, yeah. well, I don't think it fits in our you know, lineup because we have this other book. And like, to me, that is kind of scary that it's sort of, um, it is a sort of design by committee moment. But I, of course, I don't, I don't, I've never been in those meetings. I just, I mean, I've heard how they operate, but uh, to me that, that it all rides on that, like that meeting is such a scary concept. But yeah, and most people, it's not that they dislike your work. It's, uh, and I'm not saying yep. you, I'm just saying in general that yep, it's yep. not, not that they necessarily dislike all the work, but it may not fit the project or they may have other things that get in the way of like, we have another artist that's doing something similar that's coming out. We don't want it to compete. Exactly. Yep. Like exactly. All these other things you just don't factor in yeah. on a regular basis. Um, yeah. so let's, let's, let's backtrack then. Let's, let's talk a little bit about you, uh, <laughs> and sort of how you came to be. Uh, <laughs> take us back in the <laughs> way back machine. It's, it's, oh yeah. boy, where, 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 where do I start? start? Who got, who got um, you into art? Who got you oh, addicted man. to art? And I don't know, I, I think I've been sort of doing this for, for forever. Like I don't really remember not being kind of creative or, um, I think that I remember really clearly as a child creating little, um, like, uh, what are they called? Like paper dolls, like with, and clothes for my paper dolls and, and, um, and, and creating like, um, like drawing really detailed little houses and with, with super detailed little features in the house. And, um, I, I don't know, it's just something I sort of have always done, you know, and, uh, I never, I never really thought as I got older that I could do it as a living or, or, you know, possibly as, as a living or, or, you know, make, make any kind of money at it. Um, but, and I didn't, I didn't pursue it as a, any kind of a career until, um, honestly, until I moved up north, I was living in the lower mainland and I moved up north. Um, my husband's here and, um, I was fortunate enough to work in a, a daytime job that gave me the hours to to do this in the afternoons and evenings. And that's when I really kind of started diving into it, you know, yes, more yeah. voraciously, I guess. Um, but, We're yeah, I, I mean, I, I grew up with a family that was always really supportive of, of being artistic and, and, and you know, encourage that which is i'm really grateful for and i mean i have a really artistic mom and my sister as well and um it's that's those are all really encouraging important pieces you know help you sort of i don't know dive into it were, were you around i mean you said the artistic but that could be also uh 
like music totally. and and writing totally. uh, or were you around yeah. a lot of visual artists when you were young? Um, no not like not really um my i mean there's there's a couple of people in like my extended family that are, that were um like visual artists like they enjoyed painting and um uh but my sister was heavily into music singing um and when and my mom my mom was really into watercolors for a really long time but okay. um i mean she when i say creative and like artistic i think like that can encompass so many different things and she her she's a huge gardener and her yeah. gardens growing up were always enormous and beautiful and um that always stood out to me as a really creative yeah. thing to do you know so the designer of flowers totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally um and you know it it gave me so much f like fuel for imagination is or it fueled my imagination a lot like like growing up i would go out there and you know, when I was supposed to be weeding the garden, I'd be like just laying amongst all the flowers and like daydreaming about all the, you know, thinking up all these weird little animals that might live in amongst all the yeah. flowers and, you know, creating. <laughs> and then things. and then getting yelled at by your mom. Totally. Out. <laughs> You're totally. supposed to be weeding. Yeah. Well, one of like <laughs> this one job my sister and I had to do as a kid was painting the, we had these grow boxes that the veggies grew in and it was yeah. heinous. We had to paint them every year. And it was the worst job ever because like the soil would get stuck in the paint and the bugs and there's so many spiders and so yeah to distract myself i used to think of like you know there's like must be fairies and gnomes living in amongst all these yeah. for sure the absolutely adventure and narrative to go <laughs> along to make it easier <laughs> or palatable totally. yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, and then you, you said you didn't go to school for art no did you go for something else um or did you not yeah, a... so I, I have a degree in anthropology and geography, um, but, you know, when I, like a lot of people, when I went to school, I, I was young, I was, I was straight out of high school, and I really didn't know, um, whoa, that's really pink, um, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, you know, and yeah. I thought, like, well, this is kind of what you do, you go to university, or you go to college, or whatever, and, you know, that's what you do, so, yeah. um, I I knew like I had so many things that I was interested in, but I just wasn't sure like what I wanted to pursue. Um, so yeah, I did that, and then I um, in between semesters at university, I started working at backcountry lodges in um, the Canadian Rockies. Um, so every year I'd go out to Banff and um, a national park and work in work in one of these hike in lodges, and that was super fun. And I'd be out in the mountains all all summer long and hiking and climbing and um, hanging out with really fun people. And um, those were just all really amazing experiences. You know, they just all really like, like, I, like sometimes I felt like I was like, oh, what am I doing? I'm sort of like wasting my my my, you know, I'm not committing to a career. But I look back now and I'm so grateful I had all those experiences. because I think you just really you really grow and you become who you are, you know, and you, it gives you the opportunity to meet some really wild and crazy people like, it adds and up, have fun, you know, it adds up in ways that you don't expect. Like I bet you exactly. one exactly. Like the flower thing. <laughs> I mean, you end up doing lots of nature in your work. So I imagine that sort of weighs into it. And I bet you, I, I almost guarantee that, you know, doing that, that, uh, what'd you call it? A hike in. Um, lodge. yeah, they were hike in lodges. So yeah. they'd be like, 20 kilometers I don't know what that like is in miles but into the bush basically and I would have to hike in for 10 days and you know there's no running water no power and um you hike in pack in all your supplies it was a pretty like crazy experience and I mean I grew up in the city so it was you know it was a <laughs> sort of a wild experience to to, yeah. to do that but I bet, but, I bet you but yes you yeah. stories and I bet you it gave you like I mean even even the equivalent yeah. of like you know my day job i go to to a college and teach but yeah. it doesn't sound all that exciting but one of the times where i can really think yeah that, yeah and be like think about what i want to do is in the car driving yeah and like, most people say like oh what's your commute and like yeah it's a long commute it's not it's you know maybe an hour but at the same time it's not like it's a waste of my time no because it, there is something to be gained in that process um you know like even the anthropology and stuff like that i bet you there's there's so much of that that just adds up in a way and the, and the totality of it can can essentially make you who you are or make your artwork who it is or what it is over yeah. time um was yeah. there was the the um 
you know, growing up with your mom having the watercolors and the gardening and stuff like that, um, was there ever a, a time where you kind of, that it clicked that art was, you know, not necessarily the thing that you were going to do, but there was real potential there? Um, or was it kind of just a pipe dream? Like, well, maybe someday, who knows, or I'll just do it as a hobby. And you never really connected it until much later. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I honestly think it was just, I, I think I thought it was just sort of a pipe dream. And um, I, I just didn't really see that, that. I don't know, you know, that's, yeah, that's a tough question. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, I, th I think it wasn't really until I physically moved where I am now that I could see like how I could, you know, you know earn a living yeah. and, and still do this. I mean, that was a pretty Nuts. like phenomenal yeah. sort of mind blowing moment. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty expensive. Like it's tough. And it's, and I mean, it's, it's a transition. I still haven't transitioned to, you know, I, I hear of people creating books full time and I'm, I haven't done that yet, you know, and, um, maybe one day that would be amazing, but I feel also just super lucky to live somewhere where I can afford to like have a, a good paying day job and do this as well. You yep. know, it's, yep it's great so yeah i'm not sure i don't know when it kind of all sort of clicked that's a good that's a really good question i mean one, one of the things that comes out of that for for those that are listening that are like well like i suppose i oftentimes reference my students because that's the age group that i generally work with yeah but it also relays to a lot of people who are trying to like consider this as a career just in general and that that jump to a full-time illustration you know with it without necessarily being having a day job so a lot of people think that's like that is the thing that you got to do and i just don't yeah. believe that I, I think there's there's it's for some people and it's not for others and for yes. me, i i actually like having the day job yeah for a couple of different reasons one uh just the outlet so i'm not sitting in my studio all day yeah uh, <laughs> but <laughs> i also think that there is a real value to not being uh, financially dependent on your freelance. And so you're not, you're, you're able to explore and try things that maybe are not going to pay off in some sense uh, down the line and being able to explore and, and, you know, do work for you first. And if someone buys it, great. Yeah. But uh, to me, that, that is a, a value that people often discredit to having a day job uh, that it's seen as like, well, you, you're not good enough to do this full time. And it's like, well, maybe it's it's not that I'm not good enough. Maybe it's that the industry itself is, you know, or I, I need to find my place and this allows me to find my my footing. Yes. Going forward. Um, do you, does, your, does your husband do artwork of any sort? I mean, you mentioned that you like, you set up a table mm -hmm. for photographing stuff, but I don't know if that means that he's there uh, if he's just literally like move some chairs for you or if he's actually there <laughs> photographing as well. He, he, he's a photographer and a videographer okay. as well. So he's, yes, like his, his skill level is far beyond mine when it comes to photography okay. and, <laughs> um, and he loves being a part of it, which I'm really grateful for. Um, uh, and he's got a lot of really good like ideas on, on, on lighting and, and how, you know, he offers great sort of, alternative ideas you yeah. know um so yes yeah, it's, it's really fun like it's really fun to 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 do that with somebody um so how come he's not credited on the books how come <laughs> well i'm just joking oh <laughs> well <laughs> i should i should be crediting him absolutely um yeah no i probably should that's my my wife. I always feel like she gives me such uh, valuable advice on things. I know. She does all my social media and stuff, and it's like, in a way, oh. this this Gavin Doodle is as much her as it is me. <laughs> and uh, she, I mean, she gets the benefit of she gets to uh, to get the paycheck too. Well, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, like, yeah, you know, I'll buy it, buy it, buy him a new bike or, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all better. I mean, I think like, you know, it's as much to like, I can be super stubborn and, you know, like I have pretty firm, like sometimes when I have something in my mind of how I want something to be, it's really hard to like sway me out of that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I can be pretty like challenging at times, I guess, to probably, you know, convince of, of alternative ways of, of trying, yeah. you know, something. <laughs> so, <laughs> poor guy. He's probably like, no, this is the, would look really good like this. I promise. No. <laughs> but I had someone, I had someone today tell me a student go, well, I'm okay with critique and I know that I'm not going to like it all, but I'm also allowed to critique the critique. <laughs> yeah and, and i was like yeah that's true you, you're allowed to like say that you don't agree and i mean yeah. it could be challenging when it's it's a loved one yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. that's cool and all i really appreciate your opinion but nope um and and it's hard to like convey uh especially in those situations the like i really appreciate what you're doing and what you're giving me but i also have to negate uh your opinion yeah. because it's about me and not about you <laughs> uh that happens more than people probably admit in the art world <laughs> well yeah and i mean too again like you know i i'm okay with like like we talked about like the imperfections and some of the yeah. you know the bits and here and there and that's okay with me because i like that but it's it's difficult when you come from sort of a different type of background where like video work and stuff it's it's yeah. very precise and um i can appreciate that but um you know he can spot those things a, a, more than i can you know and um yeah i mean it's just different ways different ways of, of of looking at things, I guess. So it's, 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 yeah, some people are, are, uh, like precision detail oriented and some people are about like going with the flow and there is always this like happy medium. Like my, my wife, uh, went to school for art and she did the type of artwork that I would never do. And it's not oh, okay. as, that it was bad artwork or anything of the sort. In fact, it's quite lovely, but, um, it she was someone who could like spend forever on a piece yeah and it's like that is not my mo i want to be done and out the door <laughs> and so like, when, when I, I watched her making artwork and and she you know took classes and whatnot she'd work on one painting for a really long time and i just would not have the patience i would i would be driven nuts and yeah. so she's someone who is like every little detail and nook and cranny in a self or a still life would be super important in making sure she gets it exact. And I'm the type of person who just goes, yeah, close enough. Uh, yeah. And so there is that like learning to work with someone in a, in a way where you have differences of opinion, uh, but, totally. but you value it. Exactly. Of. Exactly. And I mean, yeah, exactly. And like, it's funny cause I can be pretty like, like, yeah, like I can spend hours, maybe not hours, but a long time on like an eye, like on an eye on an animal, like it'll bug me so much and I'll redo it like 14,000 times because it just isn't right. Yeah. And I'm trying to get to a point where I'm like, okay, just let that go. Yeah. <laughs> like how much paper are you going to use? You know, like go through so much paper for this one eye, but it's uh, sometimes it's just, it just doesn't sit well and I have to keep doing it until it's right. And then you know yeah so there's that but is there um so let me let me ask these questions these are some standard questions okay. i ask and i think they're okay you know what? i realize there's probably questions in this oh. comment thing that i've just totally missed this entire time uh oh there's not there's there's a lot of joins uh but no questions I, I, there, well there was no there was a comment early early on like just as we were starting let me see if i can get back to it it's it's gonna be what's your name and then it'll be, uh, oh. no, uh, it'll be that far back. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, what? Let's see. Oh, what time? Of, this is from the Moonlighting Artist. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is the clue as to, to the question here. Do you know the Moonlighting Artist? I, the na name is really, really familiar, okay. but I can't. It says, what time of day is your favorite or best time to do your art? I just think it's funny that it's coming from the moonlighting artist. But that's Clearly, like what I guess. they like the nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better yeah. say night or else. Yeah, um, yeah. 
So um, is there a time that sort of works for you well, better than others? Well, no. No, I mean, I think I've, because of, because of working during the day, like it's, it's sort of fallen into the afternoons yeah. and evenings, but, um, honestly, like, no, I, you know, I, I could sit here and do this all day if I wanted to, you know, like I, I, there isn't really a time that is, is that I feel more sort of inclined to do it, I guess. Um, yeah. W what about you, Mark? Do it's, you have? It's yeah. the same thing. It's, it's nighttime tends to be. Yeah. It. Uh, and it's not necessarily that nighttime is my favorite time to work, um, but it definitely ends up being a majority of the time that I spend in studio just because daytime gets taken up by other stuff. And so yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm okay with it. Um, I would prefer that like I could devote more time during the day to it, but I also know that uh, at some point in my life, I'm going to like be able to retire. And, well, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> And then I can set my own schedule and like, oh, I'll just, you know, the day will be mine. Uh, but I also, because I stay up late right now, it gets really hard to, uh, uh, the, the daytime, I'm always tired. Yes, yes. I think I'm like, yeah, I'm always tired for something. Yeah, I can't seem to ever like get to a point where I'm feeling super well rested. It's just the way it is, but. Yeah. You know, oh well, that's that's life. So, is there, there um, w with sort of obviously, you know, shame the idea that the schedule is is tricky at <laughs> best. Um, is there a how do I put this? Um, mm -hmm. Is there a limitation, especially with the way that you make? Uh, you know, with, with the the cutting and things of the sort. I imagine there's some limitation that has to be about uh, safety and uh, <laughs> things of that sort. Do you do you have moments where you have to like say I can't work this late because I'm I'm you know making cuts that are bad or <laughs> too too tired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you know I've I've fortunately I've I've never been like. Um, Okay, I'm pulling out the toilet paper, people. Sorry, I, I, I can't. The sponge is just not just gross. Not for me. I can't do it. Yeah, gross. sorry, sorry, people. I use toilet happy. paper. All right, just, just kind of ought to get on, get over that. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Um, it goes on so nice. Like it's so easy to like get into the little spot. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm usually pretty like. Um, I'm, I'm pretty careful because I, you know, I know too, like if I, if I cut myself or something like then that's it, like it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, yeah. and, and like I say, I've, I fortunately have never had a really bad, um, cut. So, uh, that's, that's really good. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, sometimes you do have to work really late and like if you do have a, a job during the day and, and the evenings is, is your only time to, to work and you have a deadline, then you sometimes just have to like kind of just push on through, you know, and um, stay awake and, and do it. I mean, yeah, so. Make make those sacrifices. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. What's a few fingers, yeah. you know, really. What are, what are all these red <laughs> spots on your pieces that uh let's just take an added little you know a yeah. little something extra there for for you people just so. constantly, it's confetti it's confetti yeah. just, just, just like it okay <laughs> it's all uh, part of the charm <laughs> the, the, so tell me a little bit about sort of the the move towards picture books and you know, obviously art making and you started out and you were a little kid and you were thinking about all these stories and things of that sort. But was there a time that you can sort of look back and go, oh, that's when it really sort of all clicked. And that's when art and not just, well, not just art, but specifically uh, uh, kid lit yeah. is the thing that you wanted to do. Um, I think I can't, I can't exactly remember like the specific sort of, um, I mean, I've always loved children's books. I've, 
I've, I've always loved them and I always thought it would be amazing to, to illustrate, to illustrate them or write them. Um, I, I think it was just, as I kind of grew with my practice and, um, and kind of started pushing myself a bit more out of my comfort zone and, and because I didn't like, I didn't always do this, this stand up diorama piece. It, it wasn't, um, I started doing that probably about, I don't know, like, let me think eight, nine years ago, I, I guess. Okay. Um, before everything, I, I did do a lot of paper cut, but it was, you know, I laid it flat and, and I loved it. But one day I just, stood them up and I was like wow that's really cool looking like look at the shadows that they cast and um it's it's kind of interesting because I could just change a couple pieces in the scene and the whole mood sort of changes you know um or I could adjust the light and and the way the light sh shone through it was different and that changed it um and it sort of reminded me a lot of of playing with a dollhouse <laughs> when I was a kid and um I, I love that. I love the idea of you're sort of playing, you know, like you're actually having a lot of fun with these pieces. Um, and it was, it, it was, I, I took a, I remember like taking a picture of one once with my phone and that's when it kind of, I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I think actually I could do something with this. I think like these could be in kids books. Like I could see these pictures, you know, yeah. sort of existing in, in a kid's book. Um, and it would be different. Like it would be, it would be really different than, than what I've seen out there. Um, and at that point I wasn't really aware of other, other paper cut artists. I mean, obviously there were tons out there, but I, I didn't know who else sort of did it, you know? Um, yeah. so, uh, is there, yeah. was there, um, was there a literal light bulb that went off over your head? That's like, that's like, the yeah. of like, you set the piece down for a second, you go get some water and then you turn back and, and all of it is like, oh, the light just happened to fall just at that moment and gracefully, totally. gracefully turned it into a new image for you. Totally. And I mean, it, I remember going down to my, the, like, we had a little local art store for a while. It unfortunately closed, but I remember going down there and being so excited about my idea and trying to explain it to the girl at the desk and being like, okay, this is what I want to do. And she just looked at me like, yeah, you're kind of nuts. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> you want to stand stuff up? And I said, yeah, yeah. Like, I think I just need to figure out how to stand them up. Like, how can I make them all stand? And, and um, yeah, she, she thought I was kind of bonkers. But, um, you know, that's okay. Yeah. I, I was really determined. And I just kept, like, trying to think it through. And I came up with little solutions to make them to make it work. So... <laughs> Was was she wrong? Were you were you or were you actually bonkers? Well, I mean, I think we all kind of are in our yeah. own little way, you know. I mean, this is kind of a bonkers industry, really. You know, you have to be a little bit nutty to think you want to dive in. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it, it's the 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 craziness of of a lot of the like. If you actually explained what we do as artists, sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> the people yeah. are feeling it would sound quite weird They're like oh yeah i want to go cut out things of paper and I'm, like in my case i really want to draw a toaster that has wheels on it like, <laughs> but how amazing <laughs> like what yeah. a, i think I, I feel so like lucky to have kind of this imagination that you know you you're walking down the road and you think of something or you see something and you're you start kind of like chortling to yourself because you think oh my goodness that would be so funny if it had wheels on it or yeah. like you can imagine like a chipmunk driving it or or whatever i mean it's hilarious and i i just i love that part and i mean I think growing up i was always kind of the, the weird kid you know i was always a little different and odd and you know a bit of a well i'm still am a massive introvert but like i think now like how 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 great to have that imagination still as an adult like to be able to we bring that forward yeah. you know into our lives and i think that's just such a neat way to live and it's yeah it makes you kind of different and stand out like walk a different path i guess but like i don't know it's yeah it's it's pretty cool we get to basically be kids for right the of our life uh and it's not to say that it's, <laughs> there's going to be like my parents tuning in or something like that. And they're going to go, oh, so he's just goofing <laughs> around the whole time. We wasted our money helping him through life. Uh, what do we do? Um, but I, I do think that there is like looking at it in the sense of um, 
it is difficult, but it's not difficult in the like monotony side of things. We're not doing uh, uh, something that is uh, uh, frivolous. It just happens to be the subject matter oftentimes is goofy yeah. or silly or things. Yeah, or, exactly. I see there, there, there's a comment here from uh, Haya Illustrates or Haya Illustrates and it says, is art school worth it? And so you got <laughs> two different points of view here. One, you didn't go to art school. And two, I went to art, art school and I teach in art school. Yeah. And I have a feeling we might have similar or vastly different <laughs> or maybe it's somewhere in the middle but what is your opinion do you think do you think you go to school or if you don't go to art school what are the things that you think are, were important in your career that were the sort of equivalent or helped you in the way that potentially art school would have um does that make sense so totally <laughs> yeah um so like i said i'm i'm I am, I'm extremely shy, like brutally shy, very much an introvert. And I tried one illustration class once. And I remember the art teacher told me that my, my characters didn't have any character. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a blow, yeah, it was such a blow to my ego or like everything. Um, and I, I felt so sad. I never went back. Like it was like the first class and we were trying to draw in a group and I was just like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not good at this. Um, so I'm not, not, I think, I think art school is definitely beneficial. I think it has a lot of amazing pieces to it. Um, because I didn't go, I don't know exactly what it would entail, but I'm assuming there would probably be like a business side to it maybe, or, um, you know, how to market yourself, how to, how to get yourself out there. And that, yes, like, I think that's huge. And that's, that's tough. Like I, I, I've had to do a lot of, sort of my own research and reading and um, exploring that, talking to different people, a lot of trial and error and figuring that out. But um, for in terms of exploring my style, I don't, I think for me, it was better that I just, I just slowly did it on my own, you yeah. know, and, and because too, I was never taught how to use materials necessarily the like right way, you know, like I, I kind of do things weird now. Like I, I like to layer things odd and I, I don't use watercolors the correct way. I splatter it on later on and you know, like, but that's fun and I like that and that's what I'm comfortable with. And I, I don't really want to be told how like, no, you shouldn't, like you need to use watercolors this way or you need yeah. to do it this way. You know, it's like, eh, no, I kind of want to do it my own way, you know? And um, I would, so I would love it if we um, like cut back to you and you had paint all over your face because you've been eating it the whole time because you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Charcoal. No one ever told me how to do this. Like, it's just... I, th I thought this is what you did. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's getting late. I'm hungry. I don't know what to say. <laughs> no one ever told me it's not edible. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, oh my God. The, uh, so my, here's my opinion. Um, art school is not for everyone. In fact, I have lots of students that uh, over the years that have potentially art school is not a good choice for them. And they went into it because they just assumed uh, that they mm -hmm. were supposed to. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. I think art school is good is not necessarily, this is gonna be like weird because I, I teach some of this stuff too, but is not necessarily always on the skill side. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think skills you can learn and you can practice and you can get better and you can take online classes and things of the sort. And that will, that will get you there. What, art school really brings that potentially sort of you hinted at was the community aspect. Yeah. The, yeah. the sort of critique and learning from and networking with a group of people that potentially are going to have uh, quite a bit of influence on you as an artist as you grow and change over the years. Um, and then the other thing that I think um, that art school does bring is potentially that sort of uh market knowledge mm. so you're not not to say that you can't get that through everyday sort of practice and uh study and whatnot but it definitely gives you a little bit of a head start yeah if you have someone that's there going hey here's what you need if you're going to go into this industry yeah that you know it's just it's literally just a, a foot in the door or it's a uh, a chance for you to sort of get ahead of the curve 
in some sense yeah. on that. And I, I teach that my, the class I'm teaching right now are, are two business practice classes. And so it is truly me going through and talking about contracts and taxes and how oh, to wow. self and those things. And it's not to say that uh, it is the, uh, that is the perfect class for everybody. Some people probably go, it's too commercial or it's, you know, I don't want to work with an art director long term. And so we're mm. so much about that. But in the end, at least it gives someone knowledge. So if they run into that situation down the line, they're not going, oh, shoot, they want a contract. What needs to be in a contract? Right. So that, that connection of stuff. And I, when I went to school, I don't think it was as pertinent, nor was it taught in the same way that I am now. And I'm not saying that I'm like an expert and I'm doing it perfectly, but I think the industry itself has changed. So I, I saw someone said like, I wish they taught business stuff when I was in school. Um, it really depends on when you went to school, uh, right. how much professional practice was part of that experience. Um, so like I said, I know so many artists that didn't go to art school. Yeah. Um, but I also know so many people that went and, uh, loved the community aspect of it more than anything, like just the friends you yeah. get along the way. Yeah. And so like it's to each his own, yeah. uh, and yeah, sort of absolutely. what makes sense for you. And, the money side of it sucks. I get that. Um, but sometimes the money is worth it in the end if it gets you the connections you need. But you can't guess that on first try. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's that's excellent. Yeah, for sure. And I agree, like the community piece, um, it can be really lonely, you know, when you don't. Um, I mean, I, I, I love like working for, for here in my studio, you know, at home, um, I'm really, I, I, my, my husband loves to, you know, take part. That's, it's all, that's great. But sometimes it's, it, it does get lonely not having that sort of community piece of people. Um, and I wonder if, yeah, if had I gone to school, would I have that sort of, would I have that now, you know, sort of the, those people still to continue on with in life. But I don't know, maybe that's just like anything in life. You sort of lose touch with people and yep. create new, new relationships and that too. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, most of the people I was in classes with when I was in school are, are no longer people that I, I, uh, touch base with on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, but there are a handful of folks that I do rely on or are friends that have been supportive in times of, of need or yeah. you know, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so what I like the equivalent of I went to a very well known art school. Okay. Where I went back to that school. I don't know if I would have gone or I don't know if I would have gone to that school had I known there were other schools out there. Um but I also wouldn't trade it because I made friends. Yeah. And friends are important, especially they are. when yeah. you live out of the <laughs> studio uh by yourself for quite a time. And I think like too, I mean I like high school was tough. I, I didn't really care for it too much. And, um, you know, when I went to university, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I suddenly became connected with, like, I, I realized there were so many more types of cool people out there, you know, people that were like me. And um, that was a really sort of eye opening experience in itself. And um, I think, you know, you, you start seeing that it's, yeah, like it's it's not just this one type of person. It's it, there's lots of people. There's people that you can have these like great ongoing relationships with or not, whatever. And it's yeah, it's um, I think there's that. Even that alone is 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 awesome for school for sure. Yeah. Do, um. With with the the background that you have, do you you know with with going for anthropology and, <laughs> <laughs> and things that sort. Uh, do you feel that the friends that you made when you were in school that like uh you feel disconnected from them or um, like i mean as as an example like when i went to high school i was friends with people and uh because i was cool and stuff <laughs> um but like i moved away to college and then i come back and i'm like hey everybody i'm back to visit and then everybody goes, what do you do? And I talk about art and you can see they're like, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. There was a complete disconnect um, because they had lived in a world that was totally different. You know, like they went to yeah. into business school and here I am going like, yeah, well, we sit in front of a bunch of nude models and we draw them. 
uh, <laughs> you know, there, <laughs> is there is there something that when you look at um, your your history like did you keep up with those folks no, they... no i you know i didn't like i mean it, yeah when i especially in the summer times like um you know when i was working at these lodges and stuff like i mean i had great relationships with them and good friends throughout the year and that but then i'd go I, like i'd be kind of away in in the mountains for for four or five months and um you, you you don't really yeah like I I don't know I just I didn't really hang on to those relationships you know yeah um they were great for a season and and they were wonderful people and um but you grow apart kind of and you start discovering other things in life and um you know it's those relationships don't really sort of last you know uh, so seasonal friends kind of yeah, yeah. I mean like I mean. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. I think as you get older too, like we have some really amazing family, you know, friends that we're we're very close with. But I don't have an enormous friend group really now, you know. And um, it's I, I don't know. Maybe it's because you know, people are you know they get they have families, they are developing their careers. This is kind of one of those things. They just yeah yeah I don't know. You we're friends now we are mark we, we this go, is fantastic yeah we go way back totally way back way back to like yeah eight, we can say that what's that <laughs> um so, so uh uh what was gonna, oh you know what i was gonna say okay so at the beginning of this you said you were kind of nervous yes where do we stand now um a little a little less nervous but i like feel like i'm not doing this very well because like I'm not doodling like super prolifically here because uh probably because I'm like watching what you're doing which is super cool and really fun to see um and uh, I'm ta I don't like normally talk while I'm doing this so it's kind of you know I'm 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 chattering here and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this, you are doing distracting myself fine I just realized like a second ago I was like I lost track for a second because I was getting caught up in like what color goes where? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Well, I keep like I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Like, what? What are mushrooms? Right. That's yeah. Right. No, this isn't this. This whole thing is not really about like, uh, how, what do I want to say? Like, it's not about making the perfect piece. It's really or yeah. or having the perfect conversation. It's really about just having a conversation. Yeah. Uh, and seeing where it goes and sort of, um, what else? sort of comes into play yeah. on it. Um, so tell okay. me a little bit about uh, sort of, if you were not an artist, <laughs> now obviously anthropology and things like that could probably relate, um, <laughs> but what were the other, what were other things that you would be now? Like if, if it wasn't for art now, what, where would you be? Um, what would you be? Hmm. Um, well, so, one thing I've, I've done quite a bit of is work in um, housing and um, I did work for a time uh, in an affordable housing unit um, and a, a women's transitional shelter uh, in the Rockies. Um, so I think honestly, if I had not, and I, I still, I considered this for a really long time um, and it, it like still sort of sits in the back of my mind, but um, I considered for a long time doing like social work um or some type of therapy um even like an art therapy uh, -huh. uh that that still is really interesting to me and um i we we used art therapy and music music and art therapy and play therapy in this in this um shelter uh for some of the women that were coming through and it was it was a really wonderful experience i think and it was it was just um kind of interesting to see how, how it could help them um, so I think I probably would have like maybe headed in that somewhat like that kind of a direction. Yeah. Um, sort of in, yeah, I do. I, I like the, I still like the idea of, and I think this is too why like working in a job now that is outside of the house with people. Um, there is something really satisfying about 
offering some something back to community, you know, and um, feeling like you are part of a community and, and offering something positive to community, even if it's like a very tiny piece of, of, of it as a whole, you know, um, oh. instead of just sitting and drawing at my desk all day, which is, you know, would be wonderful, but it's, it's, it, yeah, it feels good. So, yeah. So how big is the community by you? Like, I, you know, you said British Columbia, yeah. but that could be, you're, you're with a bunch of trees. <laughs> Or that uh, you are near a city and there's, you know, thousands upon thousands yeah. of people. What? We, our city's pretty, I mean, it's, it's a fair sized city, is it? I mean, it's, it's, I think it's about 70,000. So it's not huge, but it's not tiny okay. either. Um, but we are, we are right smack in the middle of the province. Um, and there's um, a lot of very tiny communities around us. Um, and they're very spread out. So there's huge populations like, or sorry, huge pieces of, of geography that there's where no one's living or their tiny, tiny like communities live. Um, and there's also a number of First Nations Aboriginal population um, communities that are scattered around up here as well, um, which, so it's, there's lots like, so, so our, it's as much as people are really spread out, it's also really sort of a tight knit community, which is, is kind of cool like living up here you feel really connected with um with the people up here you know there's uh it's, it's quite different than living in what we call like the lower mainland which is like vancouver and um vancouver island victoria um or i guess maybe that's that's a little bit different but living down where it's a really it's it's a it's it's a bigger city and there's there's more people but i don't know it's it's funny i moved from a city that there's tons and tons of people and i moved up here where there's not that many but i feel like a closer community up here than I ever did living in a big city. So interesting. Is it one of those places where like you step out the door and everybody goes, Hey, it's Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> or, is it, or is it you step out the door, door and you hear wolves in the background yeah, and you go, uh oh. The wolves, the wolves. Well we had like there's tons of bears around here and we've had so many bears in the last few years, like in our neighborhood and like wandering around and in our yard and that can be a little bit annoying at night especially when they're when you're trying to take your dog out um, annoying or scary well okay yeah it's freaky i don't yeah it's scary let's let's be honest but uh i'm trying really hard not to get scared about them anymore yeah, okay okay <laughs> i haven't quite gotten there yet but, but i'm getting better they're all friendly <laughs> they, i've heard you can hug them all totally yeah super super friendly there was one that, um, because there's a lot of apple trees in our area and one that would eat tons of apple tree, um, apples off the trees. And the kids in the neighborhood started calling him applesauce because of all the deposits that he was leaving everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, big, juicy deposits. I like, I like so. the name though. You said applesauce? Yes, his name was applesauce. He was quite, he was quite a, a big boy. That's a pretty cute name for a bear. He's, yeah, he was, he was kind of cute, like in a, large you know slightly ferocious way so <laughs> in a, in a robust but, you don't want to walk into him of any sort uh yeah. well yeah and like i i walk to work in the, you know in in the mornings i leave quite early and i would those mornings there were some mornings i would walk and go around the corner from my house and he was like right there on the sidewalk just hanging out at like seven in the morning and we've come like 20 feet from each other kind of thing. And I was like, oh my God. Like, Wait, what, what kind of bear are we talking? Is this a brown? A black bear. A what? Yeah, a bla black those, bear, so. Those aren't as dangerous, right? Well, they, they, no, like there's no, they're not, they're not like a grizzly, but they, they become really habituated to people and they're not, they're just not scared okay. of you. Like they're not scared of people anymore. So I mean, um, I'm that not, can I'm be not, a little terrifying. I'm not trying to ruin your like heroic story. <laughs> it's not heroic i like nearly you know had to go home and change my pants because it scared me so bad and I was... <laughs> but but you know he was just hanging out he was just having like a nice morning on the sidewalk and he was just eating some dandelions and then he just went back to his business and i just like ran off to work so you know all was good in the end everything was fine but yeah I, the, the first thing i had immediately when you said i I didn't have to run home and change my pants. Was, <laughs> I was going to try to make some toilet paper joke. Well, yeah, a lot you of that around. So, you know. do, do you, wait, okay, so you, you buy TP to, to work with. Uh, and maybe maybe I'm making it even more diminutive by saying TP. Uh, 
<laughs> you, you buy all this potty paper. Potty paper. Um, paper. Yeah. But uh, do you like? <laughs> I have I have uh, um, uh, hair dryers that are specifically for art purposes that are in my studio. Okay. Right? Yeah. Or like I buy paper towels for using for uh, dry brushes and things of the sort. Um, yeah. Do you? you it. Do you do you have a separate stock <laughs> of of toilet paper where it's like, hey, hands off, that's my good stuff? <laughs> or... No, no, we just buy like a big bag of it at the you know Costco and uh, and and but but the problem is sometimes like you know we we get lazy and we're getting down on the paper in general in the house and like so my then roll has to get usurped and take into the bathroom because <laughs> because we don't have enough <laughs> we're out in here send me your art supplies yeah exactly <laughs> we're like is there any toilet paper around no oh i will summon my studio i guess you can have that <laughs> so yeah interesting cool. conversations of the art yes world. Yes. Um, yes well I, you know whatever right i like, love it i it's... love the idea of just like that is a thing that you need uh for your <laughs> I mean, there's people that use like, Q-tips and other things, well, but toilet paper. Yeah, and I've, I've got, you know, I use them too. I use Q-tips as well. But the toilet yeah. paper, like, it, it has just a really nice consistency and it spreads things around well. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> Sorry. You know, yeah. Sorry, I went there. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it's totally okay. I was expecting that. And uh, I'm, I just, I won't be embarrassed by my, yeah. my toilet paper usage. You can't, you can't set me up to make that joke. <laughs> so, so if, sorry, I don't know what's, what state are you in? Uh, a state of confusion. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I am in New Hampshire. So okay. I'm on the East Coast. Uh, east Coast. We're, yeah, we're about, I don't know, a half an hour north of, um, of Boston. Uh, okay. I, I don't even know how right. long it is from. Uh, or to get to Canada from our place, but it's it's not great. You could do it in a day for sure, uh, or like a a you know an afternoon maybe you get up. Yeah. Um, but we are we are far enough north that we uh, we live in our own fun little climate. But we're also like in a very commercial district, so we don't have the the craziness of uh, like dealing with bears on a regular basis. That there my question came from. Really <laughs> Out. Yeah. Well, I, I hear that they they uh, leave applesauce everywhere, and I'm not I'm not as keen on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, the cleanup can be a bit can be a bit annoying. Um, hey, yeah. Right now, we have two little dogs that are having a full on buffet every time they go out the door because rabbits have left their own little uh, uh, oh. of, of business. So uh, don't ever come over to my house and let the dogs pick you. Especially if they've just been outside. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Um, well, the, uh, it, I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we got into potty humor here for a uh, second. I realized I'm making a uh, a kitchen uh, traffic jam. <laughs> so it's like plates and bowls, and there's going to be a light bulb oh, for some reason. Awesome. And. and plates of things Love it. and boxes of cereals that are going to be the uh the cars yeah it's really not just creating a nice colorful menagerie <laughs> at this point oh figure it's the one time i got to use the word menagerie in the i love that time. word actually yeah. i think it's a, such a cool underused word i'm gonna try to use uh, it tomorrow i don't know we have a, in my i'm gonna i'm gonna call out some students uh here in, a, in one second um because we, we were having this discussion about style. And that is something that we should talk about is sort of like, how did you get to your style? And how did you, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a dangerous word or, or people think style is one thing. And I don't necessarily agree that it's, it's just like, here's what my artwork looks like. I think your style is more than that. But um, we were trying to find words that represented people's artwork. And, you know, like people would say like, oh, your work is, uh, um, dark or moody or things of that sort and then yeah. we got into this realm of like okay let's talk fun stuff like what does your work remind you of and people would you know like oh your work reminds me of like a fresh pancake and then everybody's like oh yes yes it does <laughs> it's got that that warm inviting feeling and it's got that like it, it all has that kind of crispy edge to all of them i love it and, 
And so we got in these conversations about sort of style. And one of them in particular, we talked about someone's artwork feeling like a thrift store, which I was like, <laughs> oh, that's a good, like, it was just sort of eclectic. <laughs> And so it felt like a thrift store. Like it felt like you walk in, it's just this random thing sort of put together in a fun way. Love um, it. Yeah. But, okay, so now let's let's shift the gear to your style. Oh. Or your, your voice or whatever you want to call it. Um, what is, how would you describe your work? Oh boy. Um, is that too loaded? You know Oh, I, I just, I, you know, it's, it's funny because I've thought about it so many times and I don't, I don't really know. Like, I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess there's like, like some whimsy to it and it's, you know, it, it makes often little sense, which I like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I could. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I, I don't think I have. Yeah. The words fail me at, at the moment. Hmm. Sorry. Well, um, I'm not sure. I have to leave you hanging. You can't. I can't answer for you. So you're going to yeah. put luck right now. Um, um, <laughs> mm. it's, but it's, it was a very fun exercise to get people to start thinking about their like, how do you describe your work? Um, especially outside of the classic art terms exactly uh, well it's a juxtaposition yeah. of of uh the the way that the american uh revolution <laughs> you know like we don't need all that uh that sort of craziness we just need like okay what does it make you feel and hearing all these answers from people is a lot of fun uh long term um now Okay, so let's let's mm -hmm. go back then and let's talk about sort of style as another marker here of, of how did you come to your style? Because obviously you cut paper in all sorts of different shapes and directions and things of the sort. Yeah. But you do it in a certain way that's very distinctly yours. Even even looking at the uh, the book, the Just Beyond, uh, the very very far north. At first, I was like, oh, this is sort of it looks a little bit different than some of the other stuff yeah well, one because of black and white but then if you go look at it like it still has the same textures it right. still has the same sort of value that goes with it and and it's built in a way that actually could be very easily transitioned like the interiors could be built in a way that would look like a traditional piece um so there is a distinct sort of like style that's there but how do you how do you sort of come to that how did how did that sort of build itself for you hmm. in your work um hmm that's that's another good tough question <laughs> answer um it. answer what, no, I'm just, what's that i just said answer it <laughs> trying to try to coax it out um here. what is it huh yeah. well i think like I sort of always liked the idea of like I love I love like beautiful realistic drawings but it was never something that I was interested in doing and nor like I, I just didn't have the patience to learn that and um I, I think I wanted that but I wanted to it's kind of like shrouded a little in my own <laughs> my own um sort of like shake it up a little so i don't i don't know like I, I i wanted to i want like like the animals i draw are sort of you know like they obviously resemble the shapes of real animals but that but their eyes and their noses or their they're wearing a sweater or like a hat yeah. or whatever and um so i think i just and maybe like maybe Maybe it was, it's all been like just how my brain is. Like, I, I like the idea of these friendly creatures. And um, I think part of it too, okay, this is maybe going way off, but like, I've always been really scared of the forest. Like, that's something like I've always been super terrified of the forest. And um, when I, even though like I, I did a lot of, you know, hiking and, yeah, I was and just stuff, about like, I know, weird, right? <laughs> But I, it was always it was always really scary to me, and I think I wanted to I wanted to make it less, less scary. Like I wanted to make it sort of um, less 
frightening for me. So I, I, I think I, I started taking like images and like forest images and animals and, and other things and making them friendly, making them these pleasant scenes, you know, that, that I could, I, I felt really comfortable with and sort of drawn to, I suppose. Okay. I don't know. I think that's like the best as I can. I've thought about it so much, but it's just not something like I, I really can, I think, put into words. I don't, I'm just, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's, it, these are the like. Good questions. The, Boy. Honestly, Woo! this is, yeah. Working the working the old brain here. <laughs> what what a quiz show I put you on. Um, no, it's these are the things that like I'm asking students right now, yeah. and I imagine that uh, there's plenty of them that are going. Well, he's asking for an answer, and it's very hard to come up with an answer, especially on the on the spot. And so, like hearing that, you know, it it is challenging, or it's it's not as easy as just going well. Hey, here's here's the answer in a split second. Yeah, is probably very very good for anybody that's listening that's trying to figure out exactly what their style is yeah. or you know how to talk about it in some some effective manner. Um, the it, it, to me that's just as valuable as having the immediate answer. I in the in the job that I'm in, uh, there are times where I do interviews and. Uh, for you know a teacher a new teacher or something of the sort and one of the questions I ask them uh, is as, as a joke I actually go and I say so what makes you so special and I ask <laughs> my tone and most people are you know very quickly like oh okay well you know they're probably scared or they think it's a, a stupid question or you know maybe a, a mean question to ask and most people come up with, well, I think I'm a, I'm a person who's really good in, you know, collaborative situations or whatever. And then there was one guy that just came in and said, nothing. <laughs> and <laughs> hit me, I was like, at first I was, you know, why would you say nothing? And then he went back and said, I don't think anybody's special. I think this is a matter of we're all in the same, you know, yeah. the, it's a level playing field. And I don't think anybody has any more weight to throw around than anybody else. Yeah. And he had this great follow up to it. Um, and I like that idea of like, yeah, you're not perfect and you don't always yeah. have to be perfect to be an artist or to have uh, a say no. in, in sort of your, your work. Um, so anyways, um, okay. I, I remember one time, this was a really long time ago. I remember this person I knew, um, who we were talking about talent and if there was such a thing as talent and he said, you know what? He said, I don't, I don't believe there is such a thing as talent. I believe it's hard work. Yep. And that's like stuck with me forever because I agree. I don't think, I think you, you put the time in, you put the time and you put the effort in and you, you develop what it is you want to develop. And I think that's, I mean, I feel like I'm still growing a lot with what I do. And, and every, every time I, I draw, I figure something else out that I really like, or that I want to try, or that's different and new. And, um, but I think I'm at a point where it's all sort of, I, I've, I've honed in what, what my sort of style is, you know, what I, what I think works for me and what I feel drawn to. And, um, yeah, so I think whatever new things I, I discover, or I try are sort of within that, you know, within that sort of style that's growing and developing and, um, but it, it's time, it's time and it's putting the effort in. It does not happen over, at least for me, I mean, maybe for some people, but for me, it did not happen overnight. It took a long, long time of super frustrating moments of like piles and piles and piles of paper and like throwing pencils around because I was so frustrated. But you, you once, all of it, like for me, it was like just this moment of like, there it is, that's yeah. it, you know? And it just kind of clicked and it all made sense. and. Yeah. What's so. what's gonna be funny too is and, and I was I was thinking the same thing for me, that the idea of like I you know, I'm twenty five years out roughly from college. Uh and it, it's a matter of like now I'm finally getting to the point where I feel like, Oh yeah, now I'm doing something that's good. Uh <laughs> but I also know that ten years ago I probably thought, Yeah, I'm doing something good now. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I'm gonna look at this in a few years and go, ooh. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but that definitely wasn't it. Um, totally. I mean, and it's it's true. Like, 
I look back on, you know, the, the very first book I made, I, it will always be a very special book for what it was. And I feel, you know, I, I love it. It sort of sits there in my heart, but I've changed a lot, lot since then. And, and I feel I've honed in, you know, and, and created like I, what I create now is, is a lot different which, than, which was that's the first okay. book? Um, little things. Little yeah. things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I know it's same, same thing with me. I look back at my first book and I did it digitally. And it's like, why, yeah. why would I ever do a digital book? Like that is so not me. Uh, and I know why I did it, but it, it definitely like, I look at it now and go like, well, I definitely, I, I've come into my own or I have a better sense of like who I am and, and how this all fits together in yeah. an interesting way. Um, yeah. Let me try to figure out if I, how dark I want to go on this now. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the problem of like not having a plan. No, yeah. No, no, yeah. I feel like I'm my, kind of, oh. yeah, some of these mushrooms are starting to look a little bananas, but you know. Well, maybe make them, make them bananas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> make them banana mushrooms. Excellent. Banana mushrooms are fun. <laughs> That's the, all the cool kids are having banana mushrooms. Um, there probably is a mushroom called a banana mushroom. Now I'm sure there is. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's there's some like uh, uh, I was, I was going to say uh, trying to figure out the something ologist, and then I just realized I just go plant person. There's some plant person out there that's being horrified by the. Is it a my, mycologist? Mycology is yeah. not the study of, of mushrooms? Mushrooms, yeah. That would be upset <laughs> by the fact that I'm just saying, yeah, there's a, it's, it's some sort of mushroom. Some sort of something. Yeah. Um, there, there's a mushroom here, and I mean, I, maybe it's everywhere, actually. I don't really know. Um, but it it grows a, pro, prolifically after a forest fire. So we oh, have so many forest fires up here. It's crazy. and. Um, we uh we we actually went and like hunted mushrooms last last um spring and summer and i can't remember the name of them oh it's gonna bug me now but they're so good and they're delicious and they sell for so much money so there's these people that set up these camps in the middle of nowhere out in the bush and will buy mushrooms off of these mushroom people like these mushroom hunters that go around and like pick these mushrooms it's hysterical it's like these crazy hippie people they're they're totally funny i love it so anyway, wait, my mushroom story. there's there's all sorts of forest fires up by you. Huh? Yes, yes, and we have lots of forest fires. Regrettably, does it did it all start when you moved into town? Yes, that's all my <laughs> fault. I just let her burn. <laughs> <laughs> there's probably like no. some house burnt down, and I'm just like, let's make fun of it. Um, no, but, yeah. uh, that's that seems forest fires to the point that it could like take over your house and burn down your house um, well where, where we live isn't isn't really um well i mean i say that it's uh, there's always a potential there's there's two major rivers that um kind of are, are right in our in our in our area so and we have a lot of different types of um greenery so it, i i kind of doubt it would ever come here you know um yeah. it would be a pretty major fire if it did but there's other places like um uh there's a little town south of here uh between say us and vancouver and it's in a really dry area of the province and it burnt down like it burned down in like 20 minutes it was bananas oh. like the whole town just completely went up in flames and like everything's gone practically like you drive past it on the highway and there's you see like a an odd car or you know a bicycle just sort of there but they have it all roped off and stuff like they they haven't really i think they've started to do some rebuilding but it's terribly sad and it's i mean it's crazy how how bad it is but uh, it's just that it's just getting drier and drier every year and it's way it's so much hotter now than it ever was you know i don't know why that like a forest fire seems so much scarier to me than like a hurricane or well, like Partially, partially, like, like if it, if it, you know, water can recede, and then you have yeah you know, some water damage you got to deal with. But a forest fire that takes over a house or like can interact with you, I feel like is just so much more dangerous right off the bat. That like I have a yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, because I think we're, it's not like we're used to them, but it happens here so frequently. I, obviously, you'd never want it to happen to you, but 
um, to me, like a tornado or, you know, a hurricane is absolutely terrifying. Like I can't even imagine trying to live through that. Like the pictures you see here in the news from them, from what happens in the States is just absolutely horrific. Like these people are blown away, literally like picked oh, up and blown. Like I can't even imagine that. So I think it's, you know, if you're used, if it's a more of a regular occurrence, maybe it's not so frightening. I don't know. Is yeah. there, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to bring us back to art talk for all those people. Who are oh yeah. Where, They're all oh, like, okay. Oh, did this go down? <laughs> so tell me Sorry, about, everyone. Yeah. What size hailstones do you guys get? Uh, <laughs> so tell me about this. Uh, <laughs> uh, so for for art, is there mm -hmm. stuff that you're looking at for? I mean, obviously, we talked about there are people that are doing other like uh, uh, dimensional uh, sort of uh, paper pieces and yeah. things of the sort. Are there specifically uh, certain artists that are are your go-to's are there things that are outside of art that you're even like this is the thing that influenced you completely and everybody should know about um well i mean there, there's lots of artists that i i i love the the work of and um uh there's one fellow um he's actually uh i think i think he's one of the judges in bologna this year um and I, I'm probably going to butcher his name when I say it, but um, it's his name is let's see here, uh, Oy, Oyvind Torrester. Ugh, I'm probably saying that really bad. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Actually, he does paper cut art. <laughs> it's it's spelled S T E V E, and you're just <laughs> <mad>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I got it right, but sure. yeah. yeah. Um, he does some paper cut art and one of my favorite books he did the art for and it's it's so beautiful um but i mean i i do love a lot of the old like um kids books that i grew up with um i think it's i think it's virginia lee burton is one of the okay yeah sort of like, yeah little the little house that was my favorite favorite kids book growing up it was it's so sweet um but in like in terms of outside influences i mean we live in such a beautiful area that like exploring and um we go fly fishing and hiking and um you know cross-country skiing and stuff so it's really fun to just be out in nature and um that does influence i think my work quite a bit um I, I, we have such i mean this this winter has been a bit weird we haven't really had much of a winter but normally we have such a long winter with so much snow that it's really fun to like explore and and you know, be influenced by what you see, and then you go home and I try to replicate it with my with the paper cutting. Um, so little, like the little um, snow covered plants and the details on the trees and uh, little burrows and stuff like that. I love that. It's just so fascinating, and it's really fun to see if I can create my version of it in paper. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I see. I see a couple questions. I want to make sure that I get back to here, oh. which was um, no, that's fine. We're we're okay. We don't have to. We don't have to answer their questions. They can all survive. Uh, so, uh, here's here's a go uh, from. It looks like Tanya Lopez, or Tanya underscore Lopez, period G. Uh, uh, says, uh -huh. "What what is your personal reason to make art?" Oh, uh, is is that for me or for you? That, that's 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 for you. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's I uh, assume it's for both of us. But okay, but thinking about okay. sort of. Um, you know your your reason and and why you do what you do is there some sort of um like thing that you're trying to achieve or get out of it in a way um i i think there's lots of reasons but um it really like centers me um it's it's a really calming meditative experience cutting paper <laughs> um i feel really sort of zoned into it when I'm doing it. So it's, it really helps me sort of detach from the day and, and feel less sort of stressed. Um, I also just, I really love creating worlds, like little paper worlds. Um, I find it incredibly enjoyable and I, I love seeing them sort of come to life. And then I add the lights on and it's something else sort of happens to them and they become these own, their own little sort of places, you know? Um, so, yeah, and I think that's probably the sum is of it. it. 
somewhat i mean obviously you mentioned it as like a little kid but is some of it like an escape well i suppose to to a certain extent yeah i mean life is can be kind of stressful and obviously can be really stressful and <laughs> i <laughs> that's, a, that's an understatement um but it is a bit of an escape um but not in a bad way like not like it, it no not it's it's it's, it's, it's like not an you know it's it's a positive escape it gives me that chance to sort of um reflect and and think. Um, I don't. I know some people, you know, have asked in the past, like, do I listen to music when I work? And I never do. I, I mean, or rarely. Like, I like the silence. I like the quiet. Or I can. Um, that's really. Um, that's really in, enjoyable. Like, that's what I. I. That's what I love. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely kind of an escape and it, it really gets me out of my own head or, or even deeper into my own head, but lets me sort of think things through and sort of focus, you know? Um, yeah. So, I mean, what about for you? My, yeah, I was going to say in my case, uh, wait, what was the question? It was, uh, personal I mean, reason personal for creating for, Yeah. For creating art. Um, I think, I, I, I don't think like art for me is a therapy or anything of the sort like that. Mm -hmm. Like some people like it, self-expression therapy, et cetera. Yep. I don't think if that is, is my bag of any sort, but I do think that there's a, um, part of it is I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I literally I know, I get like, that. I, I give me like, I don't think I could be in an office I don't, I, I just don't think I would survive in a way that would be healthy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so part of it is that part of it is, um, I, I feel like, and I think this has changed over time. I think when I started out and anybody that's watched this before will probably know this and go like, Oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> um, but I think that, I used to think art was about making stuff for me and mm -hmm. about like trying to be famous or trying to do all that kind of stuff. Um, but now since I'm famous, uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, well, you are actually, so there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't want to go there. Uh, but now that I'm at a point wherein I, I've done this long enough, I start to realize more and more that I don't think I'm making art as, art being the perfect thing for me. I'm making art as a way to teach. Yeah. And so, so like I make stuff like this and part of it is just for me. And I get that it's like, it's just, you know, play. Yeah. But part of this is a learning lesson for me to be able to go back and share with other people like, oh, this is why I made this decision. And this is why this works. Or here's a technique that I used that I think would be helpful or you know, if you look at this composition that you've designed, I've done something similar in the past and this was the problem that I had with it. Yeah. And so like it becomes maybe a little bit less self-serving and more sort of communal or collaborative with people that I'm teaching. Yeah. If that makes any yeah. Um, yeah. I totally. And it, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, look at how smart and how, how nice I am that I'm doing this for everybody else. Like there is self. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like that yeah. at all. <laughs> But not at it, all. There, there is a little bit of the like I'm doing this for me, but I do think that there it's a bigger picture than just me yeah. that I need to equate in the in the manner. Um, there was another question that I want to make sure I get to. Oh, can uh, I just say one thing. Like, but you're sorry to quickly add yeah, to that. Yeah. Like your your comment about saying like you don't know like this is all this is what you know to do. Or I don't know how you put that, but yeah, that's, I don't know what else. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it for me too and i mean i think like one thing i've i've realized is this is how my brain is like i actually see in like 3d paper worlds now like i'm walking down the street and i can it's like i can close my eyes and imagine the world i'm in as paper and walking through it and like i don't know i don't i wouldn't want to not do it you know like i can't imagine not doing that and i can't imagine not then going home and creating that it's just it's totally not. Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing. It's, it's definitely who I am. And, um, that's pretty fabulous. You know, when you, when you discover that thing that just is really that kind of piece of who you are as a, as a human. But my, my brain just went to a spot where it's like you in, in a straight jacket and you're just going, the world's made out of paper. 
<laughs> well, you know, there's that. There is that. And you never know. That could happen at some point in the future. But uh, I, don't, I hope well, not. I, my mind is going towards these weird, like, scenarios. You say something, and all of a sudden I got a scenario that <laughs> pops up. Um, okay, so here's a question from uh, Creating Athena. It says, do you mm -hmm. have any tips on uh, calligraphy? Is that like collage photography, I'm assuming? Oh, that's a cool way to put I've got, it. Hopefully, I, I assume that's what it is. I'm not 100% sure. If my wife is listening and she can tell us, is that what that means? Um, then I can probably answer it. But uh, it's probably got some like really cool technical thing that I just don't know. Yeah. Um, like I don't know that technique either. It's a print process. And it requires, like I wouldn't know that, but um. what is it? No, it's a... <laughs> C O L L A G R A P H Y. That's why I think it's like collage based. Collography. I mean, you are a collage artist. You're just doing it in a dimensional aspect. Where like, is it really a printmaking process? Oh, I don't know then. <laughs> oh, there's another comment that was my fault. I thought she did something else. Laugh out loud. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. From, from the same, I, mean, I, I don't even know what I'm doing half the time, so whatever. Yeah. Um, and then uh, AJ Smith, Andy Smith's another kidlet uh, person here. He lives real near me and, and does fabulous work. Says, Kelly, your work is amazing on its own, but the lighting and layering of the paper really does elevate it to a unique place. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> That's really sweet. What thank you very much. Nice. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the creative creating Athena, yeah, so that's the one that that was my fault. I thought you did something. Okay, so um, but creating Athena also did so. Do you ever use a cutting machine like a uh, uh, Cricut to help with your paper cuts? Is it um, everything's by no? Hand, right? It's all by hand. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I think maybe it's a bit of a control thing. <laughs> I, I, I um, yeah. I get it. I, Oh, sorry. Go on. I, I, was, I was like, for me, it's it's when I do books. Oftentimes, I will do like hand lettering in the book, and I will. Oh, hand cool. Letter, I, I won't just do when I have to do hand lettering. I will not just do like a typeface and make my own typeface and type it out. So, but it's every letter has to be unique oh, and hand cool. done. It's like, oh, that's amazing. It's a uh, well, it's not not as laborious as it sounds, um, but it, it is a intended uh like no one no one notices it but it's it's a what i want to say like almost like a, a perfectionist obsessive compulsive yep thing that shows up yeah so. i i understand that i um yeah yeah and i think like that's part of like i i like to have control like over all aspects of the cutting piece like and yeah it's the it, it is more labor intensive for sure but you know it's 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 funny though it's you kind of get into a rhythm of it and it's not even that you know it's not that bad, bad so you know you know what i would love to see i don't maybe you've done mm -hmm. it and i just don't even know i would love to see you do a book that the title of the book is done with the cut paper too oh yeah that and even would like, be super fun yeah like little pop-up words like explosion words or you know like <laughs> little little whole like words that are the the uh really important or like become a little bit of a uh, concrete poetry or something of the sort yeah like yeah you pull those out because i bet you you could do some amazing like lit words <laughs> in a space that bore people i i've um that's something i'd really like to work more on is is my is my lettering like it's it's not very good and i um i love like the hand lettered um hand lettering in in kids books i think it looks so fan fantastic especially with a with alongside the art it's really neat so um something i need to kind of work on well it's like but... the equivalent of would oliver jeffers be oliver jeffers if it wasn't for <laughs> that lettering that he uses right i mean i've seen people yeah. replicate it to a point where it's like oh they're just they're just doing and maybe it's their own hand lettering but i immediately look at it and go Someone likes Oliver Jeffers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny. Yeah. And that's, it's ent interesting actually that you bring that up because that's something I've been like, going back to your style question, mm -hmm. that's something too I've been very tr conscious of is trying to develop something that is different and unique and that's mine. Um, but that doesn't, I mean, we're all influenced by what's around us, by artists, by other, you know, 
um, yeah, illustrations and illustrators we see, but I think really trying to not be like trying to focus on what's yours and developing that. And um, I'm very conscious of that. It's, 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 I, I, I've, I mean, the odd time I've seen people, um, you know, ooh, I don't want to say that they, they're copying other person's artwork, but it's, it's very, it resembles very close yeah. and it's, and, and I, absolutely it's great practice and, and, but it, it just sort of makes me sometimes a bit sad. I think like, oh, but you've got something else in you that is yours and you'll find it. You just kind of have to keep digging. Right. And, yeah. It's just know. too referential or too, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not an outright like plagiarism uh, of any sort, but it's, it's just like, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's and, and what's funny is like, I, I heard someone say at one point that if, if everybody tried to draw Snoopy the way that Charles Schultz did, there's no way that any of them would look like Snoopy the way Charles Schultz yeah. did. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. every hand shows up in some way in their artwork, whether they want it to or not. And so in a way, like why try to be someone else? Because you'll never be that person. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's not really exactly. a negative thing. It's not saying like, Oh, you'll never live up to it. No. It's literally just your, your work is different and exactly. maybe you should, you should love that part of it and and cherish it in a way um, yeah yeah exactly and maybe like that's just something like as you grow and develop as a person like you become more comfortable in your skin and you start to like see your your weird quirks and stuff as charming things and, and yeah, not something that you like want to hide, hide away or want to change you know i don't know yeah. Maybe that's me. Well, no, I, I, I feel, like, I feel <laughs> like as I've gotten older here, um, and I'm I'm approaching my you know 90s or whatever. Right. Yes. <laughs> old, <it's> good. Um, <laughs> I, I am so ancient. Um, as I see the the Grim Reaper knocking on my door, um, the there is a less of a need for me to go and reference other artists and look at other artists that I just start to go, oh, you know what? Like, I don't even care what other people do. I'm just gonna make what feels fun to yeah. me. And if other people like it, great. If they don't, so what? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. you know, again, that's that freedom of like not having to to be dependent on a paycheck because of a, uh, you know, being full-time freelance that if someone doesn't like my work and it doesn't turn into anything, it's not really make or break. Yeah. No one's, yeah. No one's gonna look at that and go, well, you failed. Um, is there uh yeah. is there a speaking of failure <laughs> is there a sign of success for you like what would when would you go you know what i did it i finally made it <laughs> oh <laughs> um it's funny because i used to think it was when i would walk into a bookstore and go to the bookshelf and find one of my books on the shelf yep. that to me like for a long time that was sort of the defining pinnacle of like success yeah. but now, um, now you cross that i crossed that and 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 it like it it was fabulous the first time i went into a bookstore and i saw little things like it, it made me cry i was so excited to see it there amongst all its buddies you know and um but i think like there isn't for me there isn't like just one sort of mountain of you know to climb up and success and you hit it and that's it like i think it's it's sort of like this everyday thing. Like, I think it's always this, it's, it's, it's even just the little things. Like, can I, can I create this out of paper? Like, Oh, that's a success. I did it. You know, and I feel really good about that or, or maybe come overcoming something that I was really nervous about trying or, and, or like, honestly, like this, like this was a really big thing for me because I've, I don't, I, I'm very private. Like I don't share myself really out there yeah. or like my art. And it was a big decision to do it. And, um, you know, I had a long chats with myself and like, okay, I, you know, I, th I really want to try this. I think it's really important to push yourself and step out of your comfort zone. And like, that's kind of a success, you know? So I don't know. I think it's like just everyday things that you, you accomplish and you feel good about. So. Well, I will speak on behalf of the whole audience who's been watching tonight that we're glad <laughs> you did. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Well, on. 
honestly, Mark, you make it really, really fun. And, and like, it's so easy to talk to you. It's, it's wonderful. I've, it's been a, such a great experience. So thank you. Well, that's because you don't see me rolling my eyes every time you speak, Quinn. Yeah, you're like <laughs> sighing into your, <laughs> your phone, <laughs> motioning to your wife to like, Please. can you make, hurry things up here? Gotta, gotta get off this call with this person. Just watching the clock in the background the whole yeah. time. Yeah, tick, tick. 10 more minutes. <laughs> got to get through it. <laughs> yeah. so, so tell me, uh, uh, tell me a little bit, wait, by hand. I'm just uh, making sure I didn't miss anything in the comments here. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Um, what is something you struggle with as an illustrator? What's the, like, you know, we could, I could get into like, what do you struggle with in life? And you know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do that. Wow. But, yeah, I know. Too many things. Uh, no, only four uh, hours long. <laughs> um, but is there something that, like, in the art world, you kind of go, "Oh, this is this is pretty taxing," and I, I, or I struggle with it in a way that I don't know is it will ever be easy for me. And the reason why I ask is just to make sure that the audience again knows that, like, they're not alone. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think, you know, like deadlines, um, deadlines and, and getting like revisions back have always, I think they'll always be stressful for me. And um, I worry, you know, even, even after I've, I've illustrated a few books, I, I always worry, like, if it's, is it good enough of what, I, what I've made? Okay. Like, are they going to like it? You know? Yeah. And um, I, I still struggle when I get a response back and even, and they've all been, honestly, my experiences have been really great, but, you know, sometimes they're very direct and that's good and they have to be, but it's, it's, I'm a, I'm a very sensitive person. So sometimes it's a little tough to like read it and you're like, okay, you know, this is not a reflection of me personally. This is just what it is and what they're looking for. And that's really important to remember that. I also like, I get panicky sometimes too, thinking like, well, I have to do it right now. Like I get this revision back and um, you know, I'll read my email while I'm at my day job. I'm like, oh, I have to get home right now and do it. You know, and I'm like, no, you have time. They don't expect it right away. You know, they took two weeks to get back to you. So you can like yeah. pause, you know, but I get really sometimes that panicky mode where I have to do it right away. And um, I, that's, that's, I think that might always be something I struggle with. And I'm just aware of it, you know, and try to sort of balance that out with, yeah. That is definitely something that I, I struggle with of like, the need to solve it in the yeah. in the moment and not let it sit for a little bit and like no yeah you're right like they don't they're not expecting it back at yeah that. now there are certain industries where they do yeah but not in this industry and just like yeah take the time and and de-stress in a way totally you can um is there thinking about let me see if this is um mark i should say to you like my um so i did charge my phone before i started but i have a really bad battery on this phone and i'm it, it i unfortunately it's getting to the end of its uh life here oh, okay. regrettably. so okay. i'm so sorry so that so that means you're gonna depart us and you're gonna well i i might have to depart in the near future here oh, yes i'm okay. so sorry that's that's, <laughs> that's fine and your canadian accent just popped out there uh oh really you said sorry <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll say, let me see if I can say something super American for you. Uh, um, hamburgers, uh, McDonald's. <laughs> it's all like corporate stuff. Just Cor McDonald's, <laughs> Nike. Uh, I just list them all off. Uh, and <laughs> um, well, we we what we say sorry a lot. Sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. We're very apologetic people here in Canada. And yeah. a. Don't, Apparently a. I don't think I say a that much, but yeah. <laughs> don't come. Don't come to. Uh, don't come to Boston because we do not say sorry very much. <laughs> a lot of, get out of my way. And, Just move. Yeah. Just, uh, like you can't merge in this lane. Um, those kind of those kind of statements on a regular it's basis. Hilarious. I love uh, it. <laughs> it's it's a. Yeah, we're not known for politeness in this in in Boston at least, and I'm not even in Boston, but it carries over. <laughs> where we are. Uh, that's amazing well if you do end up departing at some point here and you can yes. say come on i'm not kicking you off but uh i do want to say thank you for for taking the time and and 
especially since you said it was a, a real uh, <laughs> debate whether you wanted to join me or not. Um, <laughs> no, the, that idea of like, I understand that it can be a little scary, especially if it's not your, your forte to get online and say, here I am world. Yeah. Uh, and so I really do appreciate you taking the time to sort of uh, chat with me tonight. And you made it just as you said to me, uh, you made it a very lovely, fun conversation. And we started off even on a high note for me. There, there are times, and I won't name names. I'm not going to name names. But there's some of these where, like, we start out, and I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be a good conversation or not. Oh, no. uh, not because the person's a bad <laughs> person, but like, go over yeah, trying to figure out the vibe of, like, yeah. what to talk about and whatnot. And, like, we just started out, and I don't even know what the first thing that we started to joke about, but it became very clear that, like, <laughs> oh, this doesn't have to be this, like, your, your, tell me about your aesthetic and your uh, artistic vision. And instead it becomes, like, tell me something stupid. Uh, we can go from there. Um, well, so I do appreciate. And I, I was so, I was so excited, so flattered and humbled when you asked me, Mark. It really meant a lot to me. So thank you so much because it was, it. I was really, I was really excited to, and I, I love your artwork so much. Thank you. Oh, it's fabulous. Right back, and, you. right back at you. You won't be on. And I was like, it. oh, it'd be so fun to watch him do, like, do his stuff while he's, you know, while we're chatting. So. Um, and your wife seems lovely as well. We've I'm very briefly chatted in in on me in messages on Instagram. So yeah, barely. <laughs> She's okay. She's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know you, so here just... I'll show you. I'll show you my my mushroom garden. Kinda. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I could like tilt my here. Actually, I'll do it like this. Oh, it's coming along. Oh yeah. Okay. okay, so let me ask you real quick, just a bit, a bit of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, as you're doing that, when you take the photograph, how do you set them up so they're upright? Oh. Oh, that's a secret. Oh, just okay. Kidding. Okay, never mind. It's not a secret, really. Oh. Okay. Uh, they have they have backings. Some of them. What What do you mean by back? Like, like they have a little stand yeah. or something behind them? Oh. Okay. Like that. Yeah, these little pots all have like a little backing that I put on so that I can move them and I do that on purpose so like I can move it around because sometimes I don't like you know I'm not really sure. uh oh is that what I think no wait audio cut out oh sorry can you hear me now oh yes yes I can hear you now sorry about that um no I was just gonna say sometimes like I, I move things around quite a bit so it's nice to have that that option you know yeah um and then uh, maybe this guy will go on. Oops. Yeah, I just figured there must be. Yeah, like was it was it like yeah. just tape that holds it up, or if it was like foam core, or um, is it literally just a bend in the Bristol board and that's enough? Yeah, like it's foam. Sometimes I use foam core. Sometimes it's it's just enough in the board itself, like or in the paper itself. I can like um, I can bend it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but um, and and sometimes I glue it down like it just sort of sort of depends on what i'm doing but gotcha. um they usually have tiny little stands and then i can move things around and and put them where i where where i want them to be so gotcha. yeah gotcha. anyway cool awesome well that's uh oh look at that i'm, I'm just looking at it on screen now yeah. uh so that's it's kind of hard to see because there's like stuff behind it but like you know there's anyway there's, that's there's, that's there's not a quick question here that you can probably solve very quickly. I don't know if Creating Athena is asking you or asking me, but we can both answer. Do you have a favorite brand of paper? So, like you oh. said, Bristol board, but mm -hmm. uh, Canson. Um, I use oh. yeah, like I use this Strathmore quite Strathmore. a bit. Strathmore, that's it. Yeah. Strathmore. Okay. Um, it, it's it's pretty good. Uh, I use like a like a vellum has a little bit of tooth to it, so it it's um you know it it picks. Up, like the, especially because of the charcoal it picks up the charcoal quite nice yeah. then um I, i've used watercolor before but it's it's a bit heavier and a little too rough so you know yeah the uh yeah i figured there was going to be like either it was going to be this brand that everybody knows or it's going to be this like very distinct well this is this french brand that no one <laughs> nobody's ever heard of but it's yes it's i bring it in from italy every year yeah <laughs> um, very special yeah. Don't tell anybody, but it's, I make uh, my own. Yeah. One, actually, that would be super cool. Wow, making your own paper and then the, yeah, it would be too, too rough unless you can press it. I, I can't true. imagine you working on, <laughs> on your own paper. Um, 
but anyway, this awesome. is this has been lovely, and I again I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to to chat with me tonight and show us a little inside peek into this uh, into your world. <laughs> and uh, when you're done with this, are you going to post it on Instagram for us? I absolutely okay. will. Yes. So now I'm, I've started this little mushroom greenhouse and mouse's mushroom greenhouse. So I'll I'll definitely finish it and um, post it. For, okay. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mark. Right. This was such fun. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Go have a lovely eating. Eating. Go have a lovely evening. Yeah, I'll do probably, I, probably some eating as yeah, well. <laughs> I will be in touch. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Mark. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so now, for anybody that's been watching, now I gotta figure out what exactly am I doing with all of this, uh, things that, household items that are, are driving through, through this scene. What does it mean and why are they here? Like this is gonna be a peach or something, and that's a bowl or something, that's a potato. This one's a sausage. Oh, I gotta finish the sausage. Hold on. I gotta add two little uh, triangles next to it. Um, do I have it? Does it need to be brighter than that? That's too bright. I'm having to look through all my scraps here to make a little sausage piece. You can use that right there. There we go. That's perfect. Um, and then I gotta make people driving them. And there's a lot of work to be done here. Um, but that was lovely to have that that fun conversation with Kelly here and and get to know uh, more about her and actually like I said to see that process so if you don't know Kelly's work um, or you haven't haven't had a chance to look at those books go out and get those books uh, and and spread the love there's my little sausage little sausage car this is a a tribute to Richard Scary with little item cars. I'm trying to figure out how I want to draw the people or like the figures or the characters in it. I don't know exactly what they'll be. Should they be bugs that are riding in them? This is going to be a, a hamburger car, a potato car, a toaster car, a bowl of something car, a peach, a sausage, uh, a bowl of something, a fork. Uh, this one I'm trying to figure out what it should be should it be like a knife or should it be oh like a peeler or something of the sort some cereal a plate uh i forget what this one is going to be this one is a light bulb and i don't know why it's a light bulb <laughs> i think i just do that shape and it seemed like fun uh and this is a leaf and then some other boxes of some sort um and they're all in their morning commute uh Dakota Cody Cody something of the sort there says bugs would be awesome if people have other ideas of what I can do for some of these um, some of these items let me know because uh, I again they're they're not perfect yet there's room to add some uh, some pizzazz some colors some things to these so if there's something you're like hey that would be really funny if it was this or that or the other let me know. I am searching for the right color to make the inside of that bowl. Probably this. Pear instead of a light bulb. That's upside down. I like that. I, don't, I wonder, like, could I cut that in a way where it starts to look like it's an upside down pear? There's probably a way to do that. I can probably trim off a little bit. It's a question of, like, how, how set in stone is it as a... Um, as a a ham <laughs> a little tiny ham uh let's see i'm gonna put some stripes on the inside of this bowl so maybe like a little uh design on the inside there we go. So when I put that down there, it's got this weird little design that's in there. Um, that one, I, so I'll, I'll make that. I can figure out a way to make that a, a pair. I like the idea of an upside down thing because it just doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, and that is who I am as a person. And then I got to figure out what these boxes are going to be, like what material, or not material, but what's in them. Like cereal is fine, but it also could be like baking soda. Uh, as its own little object. Ooh, I didn't glue that enough. Um, so let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit tonight about uh, how's everybody doing. We're coming up on Valentine's Day. Do you have a, a gift for your lover? <laughs> sorry, everybody. I'm very sorry. That was uncalled for. Do you have a gift for your sweetie pie? Your uh, your uh, your honey boo, your uh, your bay. <laughs> I don't want to give a gift to that dog because that dog's a pain in the butt. Um, both of my dogs are pains in the butt. So here's what I'll do. I'll wrap this one this way. Let's see. Can I peel that up enough? There we go. And then can I give a curve there? I like the idea of a. Pair. It's kind of a funny colored pair, but I guess there's a lot of funny colors on a lot of this, so that's okay. Come on, peel up. Peel up. Peel, peel, peel up. You know what? Maybe I'll just like cover it over. Maybe that's the way to do it. And not have to even like try to peel it up. Peeling it up is going to be a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. I need a little scrap of the background color. And the question is, can I find something that will work? That's pink. I don't want the pink. That too is kind of pink. But I guess I'm a little bit thicker than that. Let's see. I had a bunch of it sitting on the top of my, my space here, and then I just kind of got rid of it all. Uh, I didn't get rid of it, but it fell down and it's covered up in other scraps. And so I have to, I feel a little digging. Hold on, everybody. We're going in. We're going to find a little scrap that will work and cover that up. There we go. That'll be good. So, what, what's going on in people's lives? Who's... Who's causing your problems? Let's make this therapy talk now. How can Dr. Hoffman help? Is there something I can do to make your life better? Do you want me to, is there somebody I should call and say, I heard you're being mean to so-and-so, and then teach them a lesson? I'm going to redo that little piece because it's just easier to do it this way. Uh, Bear Edwards, thank you. That's that's not for a bit, but thank you. I appreciate the, the uh, book birthday reference. Um, that, that's on Tuesday. I got a, a book reading that I'm going to go do uh, at a lovely store called The Silver Unicorn uh, here in Massachusetts. Um, that will be the official release party. And unfortunately, Dave Eggers will not be there. Um, he is, uh, he's got other things to attend to, um, like parties and stuff to do with the the Newberry honor that he got, uh, <laughs> or the Newberry award rather. So I don't think he cares that much about showing up to my little reading. Um, but I'm going to be reading some of his stuff. Uh, but, uh, it is very nice of you to, to call that out. Uh, maybe I could show us a copy, just the cover perhaps. Yeah, I probably can. I'm trying to think if I have, um, a copy nearby. I probably do. Hold on. Let me see. Maybe I could show you the painted cover. I think it might have been sitting to the side here. Maybe I'll show you a page from it. That's the actual painting from the book. 
Whoa, would that be wild? You guys want to see behind the scenes? I'm an official book that hasn't even come out yet. There you go. Let me see. Let me see what I got here. Hold on. Do I have any of those over here? I probably do. I probably do. Uh, hmm. Oh, yeah, I do. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, there's part of the cover. Oh, there's the cover without the type. There you go. Maybe that one. Let's pick one more. There we go. Here's one. Okay. So here is the cover without the type. Color's a little bit different. It changed over time. Here's the type for the cover. So you can see. See, and this is an interior from it. And so it's all, this one's all gouache, or uh, uh, no, this one's all, like, yeah. Is this one acrylic gouache? I don't remember. I think this one's acrylic gouache. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but the eyes change and the mouse change, so I had to do some digital touch up and things of that sort. Um, but this is the size of the original, and they're actually kind of small comparatively to some of the other books I've done. Um, they're almost true to size. Let's put it that way. Um, the cover's a little bit bigger because it has to have more of a bleed. But all the board was, every single board of this book, which probably doesn't even show up, was grounded with this like orange color, uh, orangey yellow color. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what my intention was there, but uh, it was. So anyways, that book comes out on Tuesday. Uh, again, written by uh, Pulitzer Prize nominee, uh, what else? Let's see. How else can I say it that it makes me sound even cooler? Uh, Time, uh, Time Magazine's, you know, 100 best authors. I don't know. There's all sorts of crazy things that he's he's uh, got under his uh, his oeuvre of of things that he's done, um, and. Uh, most importantly, author of that book, because that's the one that, like, you know, that's the one I care about, because I worked on that one. So, I'm going to make this a little potato over here. Little spots on it. Potato car, potato car. Little, 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 little potato car. Don't drive far, potato car. Uh, that's not the color I want. Where's the color I want? I guess I can use this one a little bit too. I'm going to put some little like sprouts and eyes and stuff on this. And eventually we'll have a little, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, um, uh, well, I can't think of the name. A steering wheel. There you go. I don't know why that was so hard. What else is going on, people? Don't leave me hanging. I'm a nice person. I don't. I shouldn't be left in the dust. Who's uh? Who's? Let's see. What's a good question to ask people? What's a good challenging question, Lauren? Um, so. Taylor Swift and that guy. Uh, wow, what a couple. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, wait, okay, we got a real question here. Uh, where's the letter on that? Okay, there you go. RC Paper Cat, can you please explain what your page is? Wait. what your page is and where you're going with it. My apologies if you haven't already done so since I just joined in. Uh, what do you mean my page? I need RC Paper Cat. Do you mean like what this image is? I assume that's what you mean. Um, this is going to be a, a traffic scene of things in the kitchen on their way to, to work. And so there's a sausage and a bowl, and a fork and a hamburger and a potato and a toaster. They're an upside down pair. Thank you, everybody. A leaf, a plate, 
some other boxes of things, another leaf down here, or maybe a, a lime. Um, that's probably going to be a peach or something. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that thing's going to be yet. Uh, this one, I originally I was going to make this a whisk, but then I realized these wheels are in the way. And so it may become something else. Uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, so they're, they're all going to become little things, and they're going to probably have little steering wheels and little people or something, maybe little ants driving them to work uh, just for fun. And so that's going to be the, the gist of this. But I got a ways to go. This may be a, a two-sessioner based on how much has to be done on this. Um, my wife wanted me to make a, a Valentine's image. Uh, and this is not a, a Valentine's image. What? I can't say it. This isn't a Valentine's image. I'm sorry, Lauren. But at the same time, you know, this is like, hey, you know what says love? Kitchen tra traffic. It's a... Uh, Sometimes people got to go places and, and this is their, um, this is their mode of transportation. And who's, who's to say that's not love in its own way, you know? You can't just always assume, Lauren, that everything is going to be perfect. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it is about, uh, Sometimes it is about like driving a cool car around and taking and appreciating the th the small things that you have in life that so there Lauren oh, always always trying to like make me make artwork for her <laughs> like I wanna <laughs> it's like biting commentary. Like, I would ever do that. Yeah, a good idea, Lauren. Not just one of those, hey, you know what would be fun to draw? Something that I like. <laughs> Meals on Wheels? Frederick's, okay. Frederick's, we got to talk about this. Um, where, where do you live? Bear Edwards. <laughs> this is a weird, a weird thing to bring up, but where do you live? And I'll explain once you say it. There's a, there's a reason why I'm asking this question. Nashville. Oh, that's right. Okay. So what I was going to say is, can it be closer? Because we need to hang out. Because I feel like... I feel like there's certain people that show up on here that are on here like, oh, I really want to, I really want to learn something. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. But then there's people who come in here and they just, they, they like kind of get my vibe and they understand like, oh, it's, it's so much funnier to make a good joke or to come up with a good comment that really like hits hard or nails it and saying that this is meals on wheels is like right up there. Like there's some, there's some comedy, comedy, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Like, how do I put that Lauren? Like you've done, you've done some like studying, whether you, whether you did or not, that comes through. So when you say something like that, I'm like, yep, you get it. This is a uh, meals on wheels is a perfect name for, for what's happening here. So like, Get out of Nashville. What a boring town. <laughs> My parents live in Knoxville. It's not that far. Um, okay, wait. Let me get back up there. I saw there was a, a real question. Yeah, come to Salem, New Hampshire. It's like, have you ever have you ever heard of uh, of Salem, New Hampshire? <laughs> have you ever, have you heard ever heard about the prestige that is? Um, uh, a mecca of no sales tax for all Massachusetts. That's what we got. Um, okay, so RC Paper Cat says, your collage papers are so good. What kind of paint and paper do you use? Maybe at some point uh, you can show us how you paint your papers. I can do that. Ready? I did it at the beginning of this, but I'll do it again. I'll make some, I'll make some, I'll paint a little swatch for you. Uh, 
as we get through this. Let's see. Let's find uh So normally I start with a big old piece. This is uh, Strathmore tracing, 50 sheets, 25-pound uh, tracing paper. I have some brushes over here to the side. I take a big old stinky brush like this. This one's kind of crusty. It's not perfect. You can see it's got little, uh, well, I don't know if you can see, but it's got little, uh, like the bristles aren't 100%. And I put down some paint. And in this case, I got some uh, acrylic gouache right here, some Liquitex acrylic gouache. And I take that paint and I come down here and I do this and I scrub with it. Now, here's the catch. Why am I scrubbing? I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm trying to get, because this is tracing paper and it's, it's translucent, I want to make something that when I hold it up, that there is irregularity and it's not a consistent color. Uh, and so when I go to put that down on top of some other stuff or next to, you can sort of see through it. And what I do is I just take a bunch of colors. In this case, I have this yellow, uh, blue, and pink on my palette and a little bit of white. And I just sit there and I scrub and I make swatches. And sometimes I make fun colors like this. Whoa, get up here. Look at these colors. Whoa. And sometimes I make colors that are muted, like, I don't know, I'm trying to find a muted one. Uh, like, well, let's just use this one, like this. Oh, look at that one. But you can see it's just scrubbed on tracing paper. And then I just let that dry. And so my brush is like, I haven't even like painted that much in a long time because I've been using just cut paper and like painting on top of it a little bit here and there. And, what up? But uh, I just let that dry, and then I end up with some lovely swatches, like I don't have any awesome swatches, but I end up with big swatches like this. Let's say this that have a bunch on it, and I just cut those things out. It's as simple as that. We have a whole bunch of them over to the side because they're messy and they're gross, and they're uh, a big pile in my. Uh, in my studio here. Uh, uh, RC Paper Cat says, I love your domestic, of course. I hope you'll do another one soon. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And if they ask again, I might highly consider it. I don't know if it's, uh, depends on where it is, depends on what it's on. I don't want to go do one that's like, uh, I don't know. I, I, would, I would choose a slightly different sort of approach to it. And maybe it would be less about um, uh, like a specific thing like picture books and more about sort of artistic practice or it would be about sort of some uh, tricks like, you know, maybe it's about color or something that's very specific like that and just say like, okay, well, it doesn't have to be everything in one shot. So, uh, I'm looking for a specific color here in my little swatch of colors. There we go. There we go. Um, oh, there you go, Bear Edwards. If you come up to the Eric Carl Museum and the Rockwell Museum, it's not that far away. Uh, now, if I say that and then you come up and you're a real creep, you're like, hey, I'm at your house. Like we're we're in the middle of it's like Sunday morning at three in the morning, and you come and knock on our door, and you're like, it's me. <laughs> uh, one, our dogs would attack you, and they would they would bite your ankle so hard. Uh, but then you would see me one and probably some PJs and. And half awake going, what, who? Uh, and then we would laugh and laugh. Um, uh, RC, Papercat, I could propose. There is, I could probably propose another class. Um, the question becomes uh, sort of time frame, but I could propose another class at some point. But I, the problem is, Honestly, one of the challenges with it is when I did it, uh, I got to go to a really cool location. Uh, this little, it's this little tiny town called Paris. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, um, but it's kind of neat. I didn't know about it. And then I walked there and I was, I walked there. 
I walked in, I was like, what is this place? And everybody's like, wee wee. And I was like, wow, that's different. Um, no, it was cool and it was fun. And if I could do something that was like in a location like that again, totally. If it's in a boring location, like, I don't know, a place like hmm, Nashville or something, uh, I probably would bow. <laughs> if it was in, honestly, if it was in Nashville, I'd totally go. Uh, I want to go to Nashville. I've never been to Nashville. Uh, but if it was in a location that was like, you know, Salem, New Hampshire, then I would probably do, uh, I'd probably say no go, <laughs> even though it's down the road. Uh, but I could propose one to them again. It hasn't been a, a huge uh, windfall of money yet. Maybe someday. Maybe there'll be a time where uh, I open up the door and there's a like a suitcase that's filled with, with dollar bills. And like not not dinky little dollar bills either, like like big dollar bills. Like physically big dollar bills, like cartoony dollar bills. And then I could take them out, I could show them to the world and be like, ha ha, world, I'm rich. Like, uh, like cartoony, like uh, um, over the top, uh, silly cartoon sized dollar bills that on the front of them have like a clown. Uh, uh, and I'm trying to think what else would be on them. This, this is the heating coils. Inside this toaster. Heating coils, heating coils. I mean, no, I want real money. My wife just said, do I want a suitcase full of not real money? And I realized that in her saying that, that no, I'm, that's wrong. I want real money. I want a... I want a truck to back up and pour just pennies, just lots of pennies in, into my yard. Oh, I did. It's supposed to be real money. Okay. Well, I mean, pennies are real money, but like, okay, I want, what I want is, I want it to be like a Chuck E. Cheese tokens, just tons of them. And then I can go and I, I can it's because it's real it's like you can use that and you can buy stuff like at the the little counter in chuck e cheese and i could get like a ds a nintendo ds that's like 10 years old that's been sitting up there that no one's been able to get because they never got enough tokens and it could be mine and then i would i would laugh and laugh i just always end it and i would laugh and laugh um Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Scrooge McDuck size thing of of, uh, <laughs> of money. You know that's got to hurt. You know that when Scrooge McDuck jumped into that thing, like it made it look like it was wa water and whatnot. And probably you would sink in a little bit, but you know that that like there's there's the initial shock of like like pain, and then you know that Scrooge McDuck for like. A week after was finding coins in places they didn't want coins to go and like and then then he had to weigh like does he clean them or does he just put them back out in circulation and he's like hey let me pay for this copy and he drops down a coin and it's kind of like a little a, a little suspicious patina on it of some sort that's gross uh I see, yeah uh do you paint your collage pages with something in mind or you just make a bunch of papers using random colors uh, sometimes I do have something in mind. A lot of times it's just, I have a color palette that I want to play with. And I, if I can get that, like, I, I, like in this case, I'm using a lot of scrap, to be honest, of just stuff that's sitting on the side. Um, but there are times where I will come in and I'll say, Hey, I have to draw, um, you know, a blue sky because, uh, it needs to be a sunny day. And then I realize, like, Oh, I need more blue. And I'll pick a palette ahead of time and then go and make that palette. 
Um, but for the most part, it really is a lot of just like, let me just pick some colors and play with them. And what I will do is I will pick a palette oftentimes right off the bat. That will be my like palette for that piece. And so um, I might say like, okay, there's three colors or four colors I'm working with. And that is the, the entirety of the colors I'm going to use for the piece. And it's a matter of how I mix them together that they become that thing. Um, uh, RC Paper Cat, thank you about the saying that. It's glorious. Um, uh, okay, back to Scrooge McDuck. Okay, so Scrooge McDuck. Uh, do you think Scrooge McDuck like ever brought someone into that uh, into that space and was like, "Hey, you want to dive in the money?" And they're like, "Yeah," and then they dive in, never to be seen again. And like at the bottom of his his bank vault are just like rotting corpses of ducks. Do you ever think that? Do you ever think that like maybe Scrooge McDuck is sort of sadistic and is getting away with things? Do you ever think that Scrooge McDuck? Uh, I mean, I know I know that Scrooge McDuck is based off of like Scrooge from from. Uh, Oh man, man. Cr Christmas. <laughs> What's the name of What's the name of that Christmas thing? Carol. Christmas Carol, thank you. I know that it's from that. But did he ever I mean, did they ever have like a cartoon version of it where a um where like the ghosts show up and they're like, "Haha, I'm a duck from from hell or whatever." I don't know. I don't remember. Do you think they ever had that, or do you think it was just like a straight up, uh, like, oh, it's just a silly name because he likes a lot of money? Like, was there? There probably must have been some like Disney thing that that referenced um, uh, a Christmas Carol in its own way, right? There's prob. There's got to be something out there that's like some old like 1940s cartoon that they that you know they showed before one of them them talkies uh or something of the sort that is connected to that but who knows who cares anymore you know what oh really that's where he started He wasn't before that at all. So I'm having a conversation with my wife in the background. Because she always tries to butt in. And it's like, you know, like, get your own, get your own Instagram, you know? Like, don't, don't butt in on mine all the time. That's, that's what I'm like. Let me make a little... Cha cha cha. Uh, let's see. RC Paper Cat, you are not a pest for asking questions. Christmas on Bear Mountain was the original uh, uh, Scrooge comic book. Um, wait, okay, so uh, RC Paper Cat says, sorry to be such a fast and ask you so many questions. Do you teach any per uh, in-person classes and where you are fun to hang, uh, you're fun to, fun to hang out with? That's what you say now, but like, if you saw me in person, total nightmare. Um, I do teach in person, but I teach at a college, and it's in Beverly, Massachusetts, a, a little uh, tiny college called uh, Montserrat College of Art. Um, we're pretty prestige. Um, and I teach in the illustration program. Uh, I've been teaching there for 20 years. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but I've been teaching there for about 20 years. Um, and, uh, 
some classes I am fun. Some classes snooze fast, you know. Um, but primarily, primarily I'm like the coolest teacher that everybody's ever had. If any of my students are watching, they'll, they'll chime in right now and tell you the exact same thing. If they're watching, if they're not, if no one says anything, then it's just, there's none of them are watching. So like, don't, don't have, don't, just don't. Uh, uh, let's see. RC Paper Cat. Hey, I like your wifey. Hey, RC Paper Cat. Don't put any moves on, on my wife. She's upstairs just relaxing all night long while I'm down here slaving away like normal. What a, she's, she's up there like picking her nose all night long. It's a real problem. I've been, I told her, I told her she's got to go to the doctor and get that looked at because she shouldn't really have that many boogers. But she says, the more the merrier. And I'm always like, I don't know. Like, it seems like that's questionable. And, and maybe, maybe uh, you should like consider, just, just consider. And once I say the word consider, she's like, no, boogers are fun. And, like I'm finding them everywhere in the house. She's wiping them on the walls. She's she the other day. The other day I went to to um, uh, pick up uh, one of the skillets that we have. I swear there was at least fifteen in the skillet. And it's, it's like gross, you know. Just like. I've been I've been trying to tell her for a long time that like it's it's you know it's got to a point where she really needs to assess like is this is this her life dream or or does she need to like you know like should should she go back, back to college for it that's what I'm saying like if you're really gonna if you're gonna do it like Let's figure out a way to make money off it, you know? He's about to brain me with a skillet. I mean, I'll probably get hit by a, a, a variety of boogers before it ever hits me, you know? Those might take me out. <laughs> uh, you might see a skillet to the back of the head soon. I love I loved the idea that, like, uh, <clears throat> I always make these dumb jokes about my dumb wife. Uh, no, I always make this joke about my wife, and then there's uh, there's part of me that thinks it's it's very funny, and <laughs> but did you just get to the dumb wife part. Yeah, okay, nice. Uh, <laughs> that um, I make all these jokes, and we there's probably someone out there that's like, "Ooh, you shouldn't do that," uh, and my wife always laughs about them and whatnot. And then in reality, she probably like cries later. I'm like, he, yeah, he, he did it again. Um, but I always think it's very funny that like I do this. And at some point I feel like my wife, because she made, she made super cuts of things of like all my faces at the beginning of these. I feel like she should go through and find all the times where I make fun of her on here and pull those out and then make a super cut where it's just me going like, she's an idiot. She's dumb. She picks her nose. And it's just this like super cut of me being a complete jerk the entire time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exhibit a, your honor. Uh, <laughs> you will notice that you know how, uh, you know, he claims to be nice and empathetic. You get a load of this. And then everybody's like, we didn't even know. That's people that was my imitation of people. Do you like it? It was really good. People were like, we didn't even know. Like you probably I bet you all you all didn't even see that that coming. Like it was such a such a good quip there. We didn't even know. 
Um, <laughs> I heard your favorite cut. I was gonna buy a painting, but I'm afraid your wife would have add boogers to it. <laughs> yeah. What what we do is, I I normally like if someone buys a painting or like a, a piece of artwork, I'll put it in a box, and then my wife for about a week will pick boogers and fling them in the box, and that'll be the stuffing in there to make sure the painting doesn't get damaged in the transport. It's like you know the new packing peanuts. It's the new hip way that people are doing with packing peanuts. Uh, <laughs> this is these are those dumb conversations where like. Uh, <laughs> where uh kelly who said who was on earlier and is gonna go like oh let me watch the rest of it and then turn in and be horrified that uh that's me just bad mouthing my wife and making booger jokes um partially because kelly is like really loves to pick boogers too and like i mean before we got on here and we just like I'm just like throwing Kelly under the bus without any ability for her to defend herself. Uh just be like, Yeah, well before we started tonight, Kelly said, Wait a second, I got a I got a big one, a big juicy one. And you gotta give me a minute or two to get this sucker out. And I was like, Well, we gotta it start in just like a minute. And she's like, Well, it's gonna be a minute before this sucker comes out because I gotta work this one. And uh it was like 7.55 and she was like, hey, this sucker's been trying to come out for the last like half hour. <laughs> wait, who's Quentin Blake? Wait, 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 who's, why does that name ring a bell? I mean, I was gonna have Obama on next. And uh, why, is, why does Quentin Blake sound familiar? Who is that? And he's not booger friendly. I don't, I, if someone's not willing to get into booger talk, this is, this is the part of the show where we switch to booger talk. If, if someone's not willing to talk booger talk when they come on here, well then that's on them. I don't have time for it, you know? This is the butt. This is the butt on the peach. Booger talk. Booger talk. What? He's 91. Okay, yeah, he's not hopping on Instagram. So there. There, Bear Edwards. You lose this round. Why don't you pick someone more current next time? Yeah, he's got some antique boogers. Those are some classics. Famous booger. I heard that his boogers went up for auction at Christie's, and uh, no one wanted them because boogers. Uh, <laughs> again, I'm laughing at. That was a weird laugh. Um. I'm laughing at the idea that people are tuning in just now and they hear me go, well, those are some antique boogers. And that's the, that's the one comment that they heard at the beginning of this. Um, <laughs> that's, that's funny to me. That's funny to me. I need, that's a dark brown pencil. I want my black pencil. Where's my black pencil? It's in here somewhere. Is that it? Oh, oh, black noir. Um, came in lab, creative Brenda just couldn't, just couldn't cut it. You know, some people, the sight of a booger and they just run. These are uh, the roots sticking out of this. Ugh. It's an old potato. Old potato, doodly do. Old potato, for me, who you? Old potato, 
is a friend of mine. Oh, that sucks. We'll do with this instead. Give me a color a deeper shadow on this. I still have to do the people. I still got to do the steering wheels. I still got to do the little exhausts. This is actually a little exhaust, so it's funny. There's a little shadow in that one. Let's pick a... You may not see these on your end on Instagram, but there are little shadows being cast in these. Okay, what else can we talk about besides boogers? Let's go. Um... Okay, uh, 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 why, let's tell jokes. Wait, okay, no, here's, here's what we're doing. Ready? I'm going to make up jokes on the spot. What I need from you is I need a subject. You can name any animal. Uh, you can name any, uh, What else? Any like place and all of them are cars. Yes, they're turning into cars. Uh, if you name an animal, I'll make a joke. Now it's gonna be a kid joke. It's not gonna be like a like a really well thought out joke. Um oh should I tell everybody my joke that I wrote on uh on the notes app, Lauren? The note, the joke about the the guy is at the bar about the uh, working at the factory. I can't reveal. I can't reveal how the joke pans out. Otherwise, like I can't reveal that part. Otherwise, I ruined it. What? No, no. I'm just saying. Like, should I? Should I tell that joke? Wait, Cheetos, orange crunchy ones you eat. Wait, what? What was... Random reference. <laughs> you know. Cheetos. Cheetos. That's not, I screwed it up already. Never mind. I'm sorry. I give up. You all win. I'm blurry. Oh yeah, it went blurry on me. What's up with that? It's getting better. Oh, there it is. Whoop. Whoop. I want, I had a good pink out here. Not just this pink, I had a good pink. I want that pink back. I mean, this one's okay, but this one's not like purpley colored. I don't know if that's what I want here, but we'll see. Okay, now let's get uh, 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 yeah, we'll use, we'll use one of these. Let's see. Is this uh, loaded? Yeah. Let's get in here. Oh, that's too much. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do a draw this in my style. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you can do a draw this in my, no. <laughs> I'm tired, people, stop. Stop making fun of me. Uh, I'm gonna do a draw this in your style uh, uh, challenge or whatever, you know what I mean. It's one of my artworks and you draw it in your style. <laughs> stop harassing me. Just trying to be cool. And then like everything I do, you make fun of it more. Uh, there'll be a prize. 
<laughs> like you're walking me through it. They they prize yes fun. Uh, what is the prize? Oh, yeah, <laughs> you really are walking me through. It. Uh, it will be a signed book by me. You like my stuff? Guess what? Now you can own a signed copy of the old stinky Hoffman works. Um, okay, so <laughs> Neela711 uh, says, did you always have a whimsical style or did you draw more traditional in the beginning of your art journey? Ooh, tough question. Um, I always, well, no, that's not true. I started out trying to be like cool, serious person and make like make artwork that was uh, like dark and challenging and you know comic book superhero stuff, that kind of thing. And then when I got to college, I realized I wanted to do something maybe a little bit different. And so I went a little bit more goofy with my stuff. And actually, not just a little bit. I was I had some weird pieces. Uh, I had some pieces of like uh, raisins uh, and robots. And that'll make sense if you ever are in the class. I'll show you that piece. It's a weird piece. Um, but uh, the 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 work uh, eventually got a little bit more serious when I got out of school and I was like, I have to be serious in order to be an artist. And then uh, I realized that that's dumb uh, and I wanted to have more fun. And so then I started making more fun artwork again. And now that's where I am and I'm happy with what I do. The end. And so now my work is is kind of dumb. I love it. Hey, Kim. How are you, Kim? Kim popped on. Kim, we were talking about boogers earlier. You want to talk about boogers with me for a minute? You want to explore the, the depths of dips of Kim's already gone oh scared off Kim with my booger talk no one appreciates a good booger conversation nowadays kids these days yeah, they're always just about me 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 no one ever takes a minute to think about how how boogers are a part of our lives no one ever. <laughs> Neela seven one one. I'm glad you went that route. I love your art. Thank you. Okay, let's um. I need, I need to make that a plate. I need to make that something. I need to put some some lettering or something on some of these uh, to make these feel like they are. something important. Um, let me just come in here and like color in some of these things like this. Uh, what I need from folks though, in order to make this all feasible, I need some help. And you might say to yourself, Mark, Need some help? What would Mark need help with? Okay, here's what I need. I need to figure out what that's going to be. Because I don't know yet. And it's confusing me. This might be a bullion car. Lauren, I need you to help me spell bullion. Yeah. That car is going to say bullion cubes. I don't know. Will you look it up for me? I don't know if I trust that. Yeah, I think it's B-O-U. 
How do you spell? Wait, B O U I? Yep. L L O N. B O U I L L O N. Bullion cubes. Okay, it'll fix itself eventually. I think if it doesn't, well then, I don't know. Maybe I will make like a little white thing that says bullion cubes and something up there that says something else. And then these can say like cereal. And that one can say sugar on it and that one can say something and that can say something and then it's just these two and then i get to draw what's actually in, in the scene instead of just all these other random things okay so let's make that say bullion cubes mm. what a bullion Don't be a bullion. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. Them Parisians. Them layer Parisians probably like bullion cubes. Actually, they probably don't. They like just a nice, like, handmade broth like real stuff instead of like I don't even know what a bullion cube is I think it's like just dehydrated broth but I could be wrong any cooks out there that know what bullion cube is anybody out there right now questioning why they tuned into this what yeah, there's probably, I mean, like preservatives and stuff. Yeah, because those things last a while, I think. RC paper cut, yes, yes, to uh, it's just dehydrated broth. I mean, I always think of it as like, yeah, you don't have broth, you had some, you took a bouillon cube and you put it in water and then that sort of dissolves down. That's what you get. Um, let's see. So that'll say bouillon cubes. I was thinking maybe I'll have like ants or worms or something like worms are kind of fun. I love worms recently. Worms driving these would be kind of fun. And they don't take a lot of effort to to draw. I don't I don't think it has to do anything. I mean you don't want ants in the kitchen either. Ants and worms. I feel like ants. See, like if you have a worm in the kitchen, or like even two worms, you know, there's there's not like a hundred worms coming later. And ants, I feel like you have an ant in there, and then like uh, you're gonna turn around, and all of a sudden it's just gonna be filled, filled to the brim with uh, with ants. Yeah, not a busy town. Yeah, that's that's sort of the the gist here. Let's spell out where I just lost it. Bullion cubes. Okay, what else? The only reason I'm thinking worms is just easier to draw, but maybe you know what I mean. So like, it doesn't have to be ants, or uh, it doesn't have to be worms. But I just I don't want to have to spend all night. Trying to draw uh, Yeah, make a bug bugs and stuff in general. You can do that, but Yeah. What does everyone else think? I 
I present to you all a question, a quandary. What should be driving these cars? Ants, flies, worms, mix it up. Okay. True. I could do, uh, I like the idea of flies. Because then I could just cut out like little black shapes and little wings. And so little flies driving them. It just says bullion cubes. That's funny. What should this thing be? This yellow thing. Like that's a plate. That's easy enough. But what should that yellow thing be? Originally, it was going to be. Um, oh, should it be a thing of corn? That's funny. I like what? Carrot, a yellow carrot. Yeah, it could be that. What? do that like a little little green little tuft right there and it's just some sort of like I could do that let me see where's that green that I had where's the green that I used for that oh let's get that green there's that green oh yeah 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 where's that green why am I not seeing it oh there we go okay okay butter <laughs> I like a stick of butter is pretty good I'd have to cut off the back of this, but the problem the problem is like, is it yellow enough? I mean I guess I could touch up that so that becomes more buttery. Hmm. Is it better as butter or as corn or as uh some sort of turn up not turnip, but a uh, uh, parsnip. Yeah. There's a big box of bullion cubes. Look. Yeah. I mean, do you think it should be butter? It's, it's kind of funny as butter. I think a stick of butter is funny. A severed finger. Just the severed finger rolling through, rolling through town. Okay, so now here's the question. If I'm going to make this butter, can I get this up on this end? Oh, it's close. It's close. Surgery. We're doing surgery here, folks. And I'll paint the end of this so it feels more butter-like. But it could actually say butter and have a little teaspoon measurements and stuff on it. Get off there. Have what? Oh, yeah, that's true. It could just be like a, a wrapped one. It doesn't have to be like that. That's easier. But I like the butter stick car. That's pretty good. So we'll do that. But I'm gonna put names here and here and here and here and here, and so it's it's fine. We'll get it to work, baby.
Let's just say butter like that, and then it'll have little. markings across it like that there we go and what I'll do is I will actually darken that end of it so it feels more butter like that's not the color I want I want something that's maybe a little bit more muted and tuted than that there we go that'll do it so it says butter What's up? Did you just make a noise? I'm sorry to hear that. Butter. This one over here can say eerie. Which one? I don't know. I got to figure that one out. I need ideas for this one, folks. What's this one going to be? That that butter car runs on pure uh, cow power. Well, that's what I was thinking is, yeah, maybe it's like a honeydew or it's a, some sort of melon. Yep. Which I don't particularly want to do, but I can. That just says cereal, because that's funny. Let's see, this one can say sugar over here. Sugar. Uh, my feed popped up. Let's just watch your domestic class. Neela, ne I'm assuming it's Neela 711. Um, that's probably because, uh, because the internet's listening to you that I, it popped up when you were, uh, oh, did I just put my hand in that? I kind of did. Oh, We'll survive here. There's the box lid. I'll make another little bit back there. Um, it's listening to you. It's trying to figure out everything about, about your life. And it said, hey, you want to see something related to this guy? And it dumped you right in my lap. Right in my lap. Like this one has does this even need wait a second does this even need people or characters driving them or they just have Little, uh, little. I mean, I'm gonna do little exhaust pipes. But what's what's the vote on that one? Does it need characters driving them? Yeah. Do you want to see characters, or do you think just making sure they're understandable as little cars that are driving through the kitchen is enough? I mean, if you think that it needs it, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. But... This is baking soda.
What? <laughs> okay, that color got away from me. Let me see if I can fix it here. Do the la 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 what? Oh, that kind of wore away some of that paint. Oh, well. um, that could be, it, it'd be amazing if I could make like the little sausage do a little uh, uh, school bus and things of that sort. But it's a question of like, how do I fit them all in then too? Like how big do the ants need to be? Or the bugs. Uh, let's see. It's just a question of uh, yeah, like what what makes the most sense for the the story of it all. The story of it all. Uh, okay, let's get. A different color for that. What can I do for the baking soda? The pink one on the left. This one here. Yeah, that's just going to be a plate. Plate. A green circle. Hold on a second. This one? Yeah. Which part do you think is a tangent? Oh, it crosses behind here and it's in front here. So it shouldn't really have an issue. Yeah, no, no, no. There's there, there's a cross over there. I see what you're saying, though. I see that how it could register that way. What? I mean, I could try to make it bigger, but. I don't know if it necessarily needs it. I want to make some, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, where'd that green go? I'm going to put some peas on this plate. Just some peas rolling around. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Peas on this plate. A couple peas on this plate. Who wants some peas to roll on this plate? P -p 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 peas on this plate. Oh, please, some peas on this plate. Pate. It's just, I don't want to cut out a ton of peas, so I'm just. Uh, let's see, hold on a second. I see there's another, another question or something that popped up that I'll. I'll get to you in just a second. I need to da, 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 da. hold on a second, folks. I'm, I'm cutting out peas. Just some peas on that plate. Uh, Neela711, are you working on a book or is it random illustration? I missed the beginning of the. Uh, this is just random. This is, I mean, this totally makes sense. Um, uh, I, I have a book project, but I'm waiting for the manuscript to roll in. So in the meantime, uh, all the stuff I'm doing as of right now is for, for random purposes like this.
Now, if someone wants me to do a book about the morning commute in the kitchen, I can do it. I'm not ruling it out. Wait a second, don't steal it. You scoundrels. What scoundrels you are. Can't believe you would even consider that. Scoundrels. Scoundrels. Ugh. You know what I can't stand? Scoundrels. Just scoundreling everywhere. Being just the biggest scoundrels. Ugh. Ugh, I can't take it, man. Scoundrels. Acting. This is my true self, baby. Everybody knows this guy doesn't like scoundrels. Ugh. So scoundrelly. Walking in here trying to be all like scoundrels. Sorry, I'm dumb, folks. Or maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm the good one. Maybe you're the, the weirdos. You ever think of that? No, of course you didn't. You didn't want to take a mirror and look and look at yourself in the mirror ever. You just want to blame me. But then you realize you're really the scoundrel. It's not. It's not. It's not me. Never been a scoundrel in my life. Never. No, totally not me. I'm no scoundrel. No. Uh, Neil seven one. Uh, either insects are taking over the kitchen, or each of the uh, food I'm a, is an individual is an individual character. I mean, they could have little faces and stuff, but I think probably I need to do. Probably some sort of little dumb bug on each one of these. Dumb bugs. Let's see. I'm getting the shadows underneath the wheels to make it look like these things. I'm driving. Drive, 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 drive. Drive, drive. Ooh, cockroaches. Oh, I like that. A cockroach. I like the idea of cockroaches in there. They're all just driving little cars. Because those, one of the reasons I like those, they're, they're black and I don't have to do a lot with them. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm trying to make it easy on myself. What are we time wise? Okay, I gotta make sure. There's a little lemon. A little lemon, 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 lemon. Okay, let's see what happens if I make a little a cockroach. A little. If I did this, it was like a little thing like that, and I made little wings, a little steering wheel, and arms coming off. 
It's like pop, 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 putting along. That'd be kind of fun. I like the idea of a little cockroach. I'm blurry again. Figure out what that one's going to be here in a minute. But I can do that. There's a little ant. Problem those wheels on the bullion cubes. Maybe I'll make that. That's my little ant. Driving his little. Bullion cubes. Let's see. I'm gonna cut another little. The color man. True. There's something about having them collage though that it's kind of fun. Oh, I don't know if I have the ability to do that. <laughs> Someone needs to mind their own business. <laughs> Neela 711. I don't even know if 711 is the right. Uh, it's like 711. You, uh, maybe maybe what, what it really is. But um, I get it. I get it. Could be. I'm just thinking, I don't have to do too much. It's already so late in the night. I've already done so much. I don't, I don't need to. I don't need to. It's been forever. Let's see. That one's sit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There'd be like all sorts of uh, accidents. People getting mangled. Gold. Uh, just ants and cockroaches, I think. think. I think. Maybe some flies. No fun. That's what it is. They got into flat. Oh, into the flower? Oh. Uh, a jumbo shrimp drive in the pink. Wait. <laughs> but this shrimp can't be married. <laughs> okay, now we're going too far, people. We're going too far. Should I do some worms? What about? Should I do a worm? Hey, real quick question. I got flies, house roaches, cockroaches. Uh, what about worms?
worms. Yeah, there, there was a show that we used to watch called, uh, what was it called? called it. Total Blackout. That was what it was. Hosted by Jaleel White, i.e. Urkel. Um, and it was a show where they'd put people in a room and they had a challenge they had to accomplish. Like they had to walk through a maze or whatever, but not touch the edge of things. But it was all black. There was like, there's no light let in, so they couldn't see anything. But they had uh, night vision cameras on that or whatever it was to be able to see the people going through the space. And there was this lady who I think they had to like just figure out what was in these bowls or something or like had to describe something that was in front of them. And she kept putting her hands down in, in whatever it was and almost everything she touched, you go, worms. And we thought it was so funny. It was always just worms. <laughs> worms. So that became a, a a running gag in our house of worms. You know, that old hat. So now here's the funny part. Ready? I'm going to make an ant that's riding on the plate with the peas. And you laughed and laughed and laughed, and it was the funniest thing ever. There's my little aunt. He's driving a plate full of peas. And then we'll do another little, do a little fat ant over on the sausage. But he's got a tiny head. Maybe it'll be a carpenter ant, a sausage ant. It'll be right here. But I need to, all these I need to like cut the bottom of. So they're like, they sit down in that. And then I need one down here and I need one on. Yeah. It's one of those ants wings. You think there should be a fly? Is that what you said? Yeah. I, mean, I can turn some of these into a fly. I mean, definitely by putting different wings on them, that just solves it right there. But let me cut out a couple more and then I'll stick these down. And then I need to still figure out what this thing is. Oh, wait. No, a fly, I could do a body that's smaller than a big head. That becomes a fly. So here's what I'll do. I'll do that guy will become a fly. So will this one down here. I think I'll drop a little eyes on them and stuff. But something like that. What? There. So some of them they're down in, some of them are, they're on top. That'll happen on the plate. Yeah, it'll happen on a couple of them. So, so don't, don't you worry. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna color back on top of them with um, with a uh, 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 colored pencil and stuff. Uh, ants trying to drag the toaster ahead, <laughs> little uh, like a um, uh, what do you want to call it? Like a triple A of some sort. So let's see, let's this here. This is my bug grinding in the butter. 
There's my amp. Some of the boxes around are drivable and some of them are just there. That's okay. Especially because I have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> a six hour meeting tomorrow. And so like, you know, being up super late, drawing every little detail. It's not, not in the cards tonight, baby. This one needs to have a little body. Uh, Hold on a second. I saw there was another question. Uh, RC paper. Did you use a glue stick to adhere the large clodge? Paper piece sure did. Elmer's glue. All purpose. Glue stick. pH balanced. Oh, okay. Paula Becker. How, how did hourly comic day go i had a, a someone at school that was doing that all day long too so there was uh i didn't do it i couldn't do it yeah did anybody else do it anybody else make comics all day long and pass it off as work <laughs> anybody else try to cheat the system and pretend like that somehow Actual work. Uh, let's see. We got. There's a big bug here. Big bug riding in a bowl. Big bug riding in a bull. Boop, boop, boop. What else needs to be stuck down? Like that one just keeps looking like it's coming up, but I don't know if it is. Now there's a piece stuck to it. that piece off there. Okay, let's get exhaust fumes are coming. They will. They will get there. First, I got to deal with these guys, and then I'll figure out how to do the exhaust fumes. They'll be probably done with colored pencil of some sort after the fact, and that's probably a last minute touch. But they will get there. Let's get this ant down on the fork. Down on the fork again. Gotta get that ant stuck to that fork again. So I want to remind people what my sketch looked like when I started the evening. You remember what it looked like, Lauren? Yeah. <laughs> you can see it? Oh, yeah, you can see it. That's my sketch. <laughs> That's my sketch. It is a little dinky car. That's it. So anybody who thinks sketching is really important, it probably is, but that's what I started with tonight. It has turned into this weird collection of stuff. Let's see. I'm trying to get all these things stuck down here and not make my hands too sticky in the process. That's not generally working out so far. My hands are very sticky right now. Get that edge up just a little bit right there and color that in. There we go. Ooh, I lost one. I lost that uh that fly that's sitting up there and that toaster oven. <laughs> Not toaster oven. Uh the, the toaster. Toaster is a whole different thing. How 
dare I call it just a toaster oven. And this is just a fancy toaster. They still have to have eyes and wings. Okay. Let's draw some little eyes on them now. See if I come here and I just do this. These have these are huge, huge eyes. This is I've got some eyes there. You're not going to end up being scary looking. Don't worry. You'll get adjusted. What? Oh, who said that? Bear Edwards? Of course. Of course, old uh, Don Rickles himself. <laughs> Coming in hot. Uh, yes, that is funny. And had I known that it's going to be ants at the beginning, I should have done that. But make some of these eyes touch. It's funnier if they touch. What? They will be. Once I put pupils on them and stuff, it should be pretty cute in the end. Yep. I gotta let those dry for a minute. Where are we at time? 11.52, so I'm gonna have to go over into a, uh, a two session here with this sucker, but we'll manage. So if I do. Oh. Yes, for those that don't know what that means, uh, I'm just going to have to start and re or stop and then restart the feed. So we end up with um, about part two, essentially. Just purely based on the fact that this ends at uh, four hours. I can't do longer than four hours on Instagram, otherwise, it kicks me off. So. I will need to. Stop and restart at a certain point here. Another couple minutes will go. Let's see if I can get these other things stuck down that aren't quite stuck down the way I want them to be. And then I'll come back with stuff like these pencils and do lots of. This and where's that? I want that good orangey pink that I have. I need to get another one of these pencils. Let's see if I can find it here. It's down in here somewhere. It's probably very small. There it is. Yeah, because it's running out of steam. I just need to get, get another one of these. I might have to just order this pencil because I use this pencil all the time. Just this one. It's Prismacolor Orange something. Oh man, that's that's hard to read now. Orange. Ooh. All right, I'll find it. it. Does have a barcode, but maybe I just gotta make sure I don't sharpen it to the point where that barcode disappears. Oh, uh, where's my pencil sharpener now, though? Anybody see it? There it is. 
Thanks for the help, everybody. <laughs> Neela711, thank you for joining me. Cheeks. And give them like. bodies like this and then What's that guy driving let's see we'll give him Pupils now. I see. Dogs are fighting upstairs. Everybody hear that? That's our dogs. Uh, where are we? Eleven fifty-five. on the potato bug They're good against uh, blue toaster yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna do wings on these um, it's all, all slow building up of these little bugs which are trying to do one thing at a time that Get this guy there <laughs> Okay. See where else can I? I still have to figure out that guy. But we'll get there. We will get there. We will get there. This guy's riding like a motorcycle. Let's see, this one needs.
that. I'm getting there. Okay, I probably need to end this. Oh yeah, we're at 11.59. I need to end this. I will come back. If you want to watch the rest of this, just tune back in in a matter of a few minutes. I got to share this first as part one, and then uh, I will pick back up and continue to draw my little bug. Uh, what do you call it? Rush hour. All right. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Gabin Doodle. February 1st, part two. Uh, earlier tonight, I had on uh, Kelly Poussette. We talked and had a lovely time. Uh, I've been working on this sucker for about four hours now. And we're getting close to being done, but I got to finish it with a part two. Uh, and we will get there. This is a bunch of bugs that are um, driving around the kitchen on their way to work. Uh, and I'm slowly working on it. So give it a bit, but we're getting there. Uh, we're going to keep adding to this. If you want to throw questions in the comments, I will be watching my feed so I can have that conversation. But so far, this is what we got. And now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to start to work on some of the other little details that will show up in some of this. So, uh, I'm trying to see if I... Is this too crazy of a color? Uh, so I don't know if that's crazy in color what i'm looking to do now is put some like smaller details into this guy i would like um it'd be good if i actually shook this up and got the right color but there's a bunch of little bugs that are just driving around a little time Ooh, careful there. Careful there, crazy man. There we go. Okay. Yes. Yep. I don't know if I like that mouth in there. Let me mix that up. That one's going fast. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to do that to a couple of them. Okay, now I also decided that I probably want to make their um, I probably want to make their little their little uh, legs maybe a different color, we'll see. There's my little flies. Flies that have uh, little proboscis noses, and I'll give them some wings.
I think just flies. I don't know if it needs to be fruit flies. Fruit flies would be so small. I don't know if you even see them. For anybody that doesn't understand, I'm talking to my wife. She's upstairs. She can hear and she's watching, watching the feed from upstairs. And every once in a while she chimes in with some funny stuff. And then more likely she chimes in with a bunch of nonsense. Nonsense. It's my job to parse what she's even talking about, you know? And I can't use that. I wonder if I have, like, can I do this? Is that crazy? Oh, it's not too bad. I could do that. Yeah, did people do kid that art postcard today? If not, too late. It's not too late, you can put it up. No one's gonna blame you. Yep. At some point. Oh, is it to, is February second Groundhog Day? Yeah, February second. Oh, RC Paper Cat, uh, Kid Lit Art Postcard Day. Uh, it is a day for those that are trying to be in the Kid Lit world or are in the Kid Lit world to share um, an image on Instagram um, that, well, I guess not just Instagram. Yeah, my wife's, wife's yelling at me from upstairs. Um, uh, and it is... Uh, you can, if you just look, look at the hashtag kidlit art postcard um, on, on Instagram, you'll see what people do. But essentially, it's, it's a way to, for people to get their work in front of art directors and folks um, in a sort of nice, easy hashtag. It was started by a lovely lady named Gina Perry, who I actually had on last week. Uh, and it sort of took off in the, the world. Now uses that hashtag for um, showing the artwork during these times, and so um, it's it's just a nice little quick way for people to share what they're doing, and it's sort of like a making work like a postcard, um, but it's digital, and you don't have to do anything other than just put it up online, and people look at it. So hashtag kidlit art postcard. And then people refer to it as Kidlit Art Postcard Day, but it's really just, the hashtag doesn't have the word day in it. Okay. Let's see. So there's, this guy needs... Crazy long antennae. And then let's look at steering wheels for these. Uh, 
there's not really room on the desk right now. sound like a crazy person uh, my wife just said put my book up here um, my most recent book but the problem is it just there's not a lot of space oh what book uh, Soren Seventh Song that comes out on Tuesday uh, that is written by the Newberry uh, award winner uh, Dave Eggers who uh, just won that at the American Library Association um, conference, and it's the big, uh, the big award for uh, all of um, kid lit. Um, uh, what do I want to say? That's what I'm looking for. The Newberry uh, kid lit uh, writing. And so there's a, the Caldecott, which is the art side of things, and then there's the uh, Newberry that's the writing side. So uh, RC Paper Cat. Oh, Soren's Seventh Song. Sorry, that's the name of the book. Soren's Seventh Song. Lauren, you gotta stop. Uh, S O R E N apostrophe S seventh song. Um, okay, so RC Paper Cat, you said, how did I start the the piece? Um, it's it's just collaged white paper, so I just have like swatches like this, and I cut it into shapes, um, and chopped it up to a point where I could go and put it down on the surface. So I ended up with these sort of irregular uh, edges. I like doing that for rather than just having a white. Uh, page that I work on. I like the sort of irregularity that happens from doing this. So um, that sort of where that came from. I'm going to make this there was a suggestion. I think it was RC Paper Cat said about a watermelon. So this is going to be a little sort of melon car. So I'm just putting some striping on it and then I'll put a little Nub right in there. Uh. <laughs> now I'm me. No, I'm sorry. There's that. Let me get. I need a darker, like brown or something there. To, yeah. Get that nub in there. Let's go in here and let's add these wheels, and I'll come back and work on. Maybe the exhaust pipes. questions that people have. Hey, Annie. I don't know if you're still on or if you hopped on and hopped off. But how are you? All my wheels, I think I got them all. I think I got them all. You're okay, good. 
How's how's uh, post grad life? How's that real world business? It's a little bit more of a little hole they're sitting in on some of these. <laughs> Glad you're not in school anymore, but you miss everybody? Yeah. I'm teaching the professional practice class right now. And I've been going through and showing people artwork from some of the other um, previous semesters and whatnot, and it brings back memories. Ye old, ye old memories. finish this up yeah just a little watermelon it's a little subtle without it getting like too dark Now we come back with this. Black centers to the wheels. Beep, 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 uh, And he says, I haven't had time to see the live, so they started working. Uh, an outdoor education last year, interesting. Um, my wife, yeah, Mrs. Hoffa used to do that. Where, where is the outdoor education stuff? Where it be? can't just throw that out there and just like not tell us where although maybe you don't want to tell people where you work 
don't know, maybe that's true. Okay, that's like 10 minutes away from your house. Oh. Are you in, uh, are you in, what was it, the Carolinas? One of the Carolinas, if I remember correctly? It was down south somewhere. I don't remember where. I know it was down south. Down yonder. What was it, Maryland? Oh yeah, Maryland, there you go. Oh, that's right, Ty was in North Carolina. Why did I, I always got that mixed up, didn't I? Can never get that right. Ugh, I'm so angry at myself. Never got that right. Ooh, that is not shaking up. Let's see. Are you telling me that North Carolina and Maryland are two different places? Get out of there, yeah. Stinky colors. I'll put a highlight on those so they feel like a little, uh, exhaust pipes. Yeah, I didn't take the paper towel, it's just the I just needed it quick before it dried up and turned into a, uh, yep. It was just about soaking up some water. That was it. Nothing special. What? No, a tail t tailpipe on a fork. Not in my wildest dreams. Or a tailpipe on a hamburger. Now, a tailpipe on a hamburger, I did think about. So, you know, that was, that was sort of a go-to. Like, who wouldn't think that? That seems like it's pretty obvious, if you ask me. I still got to do all the like little details on the buggies. Not the cars, I get it. I'm just gonna do this. That's the noise they make. Let's go make those bugs bugs. There we go. Uh, the there it is.
What else would I like to do? Uh, what color pencils do you like working with? Uh, I mean, it's just two brands. It's Faber-Castell's uh, Polychromos and um, Prismacolors Premier, whatever they are, uh, standard Prismacolors. Um, it's between those two. There's some other brands I've tried that are uh, clunky at best. Uh, and so to me, those, those are the ones that seem to be fairly consistent and uh, work well with the process and materials. The, the main problem I have with the other ones is like, sometimes they just don't sit down on the surface. Like even if you have a clean surface, it, it, they just don't have the pigment or they don't, they're, they're just clunky all around. And so the ones I've had the most success with are the Polychromos um, Fabric Castell and then the um, Prisma Colors. And for the most part, it's just whatever color makes sense. And I, I, there's no like, oh, well, I use this one for this and this one for that. This is pretty straightforward um, application. So uh, we're going to just, just put that in there and I need it for this guy. cheeks. These guys. Ooh, don't need that. And then if I want to, what color can I do that would be a good mouth on these? Not very sure. Barely. Do I have anything that would be brighter? Brighter than this color, but not so bright that it would shock people. I'm not turning out green. This one might be able to use. Although this can be, yeah, it's too big of a brush. Okay, so let's see. I'll do it with one of these. I'll do it with this. this one. There's little smiles on them. You missed the coffee. Oh, and that was the other thing I was going to do. I was going to cover this up you know, like this. Regular sort of. Coloring there. Let's see. Is there anything else that I want to touch at this point? I'm at a point where it's, um, I feel like I'm putting too much in, and it's good to sort of stop at this point. I'm going to put little sheens on a couple of things, and then call it at that. Fork may be my favorite thing out of the whole bunch. The fork and the hamburger and the butter. chaotic but it 
it's traffic. I don't know if it's worth trying to push it that much further anyways. Let me do a little bit of cleanup here for everybody. And then I'll present it nicely so everybody can see it. We'll call that a night. So let me just get this stuff cleaned up just a touch here. You all didn't know I was like a beatboxer, but I am. So let's see, let's zoom out so you can see the whole. There we go. So it's bugs driving the little cars, the little vehicles that are all sorts of things on their way to work. You know, that classic tale. Okay, folks, that's it for the night. Uh, I will see you next week. Next week we have on uh, Reggie Brown, I believe, uh, at 8 p.m. Reggie Brown uh, is uh, quite quite a fabulous illustrator uh and i'm looking forward to having a lovely chat with him um what yeah new york times best-selling illustrator uh, and so we will have him on and if you are uh able to would you um uh tune in and join us uh, RC Paper Cat, uh, Paper Cat, I will um, uh, post a video of this later that won't have the comments on it, so you don't have to worry about seeing the comments the whole time. Yeah, in a few minutes, honestly, that's right. Uh, and then uh, after this, uh, <clears throat> I'll also, probably tomorrow night I, or somewhere this weekend, I will post it to YouTube so you can watch it off of YouTube. And then later, I will scan this and put the actual image up for people to look at um, online uh on instagram etc um without the video so you get a nice clear crisp version of it so otherwise charles santoso uh you joined and i'm going to step out now um so you all have a lovely evening and i will see you all next week back here i need a nice sign off at some point uh get get gab and do do the later how's that uh, Gavin Doodle later. Doodle later. Um, all right. Y'all have a lovely evening, and I will see you next week. Bye.